thank you very much. The second for one, the attending. Yes, Beth. Sorry. Yes, Are we ready? Yes, Pa Sena. Tap the mic. Yes, nagaling ang ngaw ka. So, uh, uh, I'd like, um, I'd like to call the uh, meeting uh, on behalf of the Committee on Economic Affairs, um, jointly with the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, and we're honored with the presence with the presence of our chairman, uh, Coco Pimentel, and um, we have here the uh, resolution filed by. Uh, this representation on the status, plans, measures of the government for hard hit industries in the country. And we would like to go through uh, both manufacturing and services this morning, which is uh, quite an extensive list. So uh, I'd also like to welcome here um, Senator uh, Ontiveros, who has kindly uh, Morning, chair. joined us. And uh, perhaps Secretary uh, Beth Agas could. Uh, now acknowledge the guests who are here present. Good morning, Senator, and good morning, Senator Risa and Senator Pimentel. Uh, for today's public hearing, we will be discussing the uh, Senate Resolution Number 682, which is the which is the status of the measures, plans, for and programs of the government for hard-hit industries in the country, which was introduced by Senator Marcos. Uh, for today's hearing, we have from the Department of Finance, Yusek Hill Beltran. We also have Director Valerie Joy. Valerie Joy. Uh, Comsec, can we request them to put on their videos, please, so that we can, uh, rec we will recognize them. Ah, uh, yes, Paul. we would like to request everybody to turn on their Video, please. Ay, salamat. Okay. Again, po, from the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Karen Yambao representing the Bureau of Customs. Pakitaas lang yung kamay, ano? Hindi ko nakikita eh, yung mga pangalan. Sigurado. Ano ba? We are from the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. We have Director Yofrosino M. Bernabe Jr. from the well, Office well. Thank of you. Systematic well. Risk Management. Also from Banco Central, we have Ms. Maria, Chris, Mar Maria Cynthia M. Season, the Deputy Director of the Supervisory, Supervisory and Legal uh, Supervisory Policy and Research Department. We have Bank Officer Number Five, Miss Abigail F. Ilagan, and Bank Officer Five also from the Department of Economic Research of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Mr. Johnny Lee E. Caitiles. For their support, they have Attorney Katrina Ann. Limbon High Aldon, the Acting Deputy Director of the, of, of the Office of General Counsel and Legal Services. From the National Economic Development Authority, they are represented by Yusek Edelion, Yusek Rosemary G. Edelion. And Ms. Mary Ash Day O Malimit, the Chief Economic Development Specialist Infrastructure Staff. They yes, also I told you Director Reynaldo Arcancho, Director for National Policy and Planning Staff. Also with them is Ms. Uh, Criselle Santos, 
uh, Mr. Miss Dennis Erika P. Senire. Pakitaas lang yung kamay. Hindi ko po kayo nakikita at uh, nakikilala. Sorry, pakitaas lang kamay pag nabanggit yung pangalan. Mr. Okay, Celso L. Crisostomo Jr. Miss okay. Madeleine P. Monteramos. Miss Vanessa M. Candido. Miss Ter Mr. Celso L. Crisostomo Jr. Miss Ravina Vera A. Madrid, Miss Maria Clarissa P. Manson, all from the National Economic Development Authority. From the Department of Trade and Industry, they are represented by Director Sandy Recolizado. And from the Department of Budget and Management, we have ASEC Rolando Q. Toledo. From the Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, they are represented by sorry, Engineer Nenita Jimenez, Engineer 5, Attorney Michael S. Villafranca, Director for Human Resource and Administrative Service. They also have Mr. Andrew V. Santiago, uh, the OIC Director for Stakeholders Relations Service. And they have Ralph Joe Ed A. De La Cruz, Engineer 3, and Engineer Jervis M. Rodriguez, Engineer 2. From the Department of Tourism, they are represented by Yusek Roberto P. Ab Alabado III, the Tourism Regulation, Coordination, and Research and Resource Generation. They also have Attorney Viveca Lopez. And for the liaison officers, do we have Sherwin Manuel from the Office of the Department of Transportation? They are rep represented by Mr. Billy Aransanso, Transportation Development <laughs> Officer. From the office, the office of uh, local interior government, they are represented by Yusek Marlo Iringan. From the Department of Labor and Develop and Employment, they are represented by ASEC Dominic R. Tutay and Executive Director Ama Charisma L. Sat Satumba. From the semiconductor, semiconductor and Electronics Industries in the Philippines Foundation, or CEPI. They are represented by their president, Dan. Mr. Dan Lachica, and their industry analyst, Genevieve Bautista. Okay, mga suki yan. Okay. From the SMART, SMART Communications, PLDT, they are represented by Attorney Roy Ibay, the Vice President Head of Regulatory Smart Communications, and Attorney Eileen Regio, First Vice President Regulatory and Strategic Affairs of PLDT. From, from the Confederation of Wearables, Exporters of the Philippines or Comweb, they are represented by Ms. Maria Teresita Hoxon Agoncillo, their Executive Director, together with, with Jeanette Simpao, Compliance Director, and Char Diaz, their Administrative Officer. From the Confederation of Garment Exporters of the Philippines, they are represented by the Associate Director, Rosette Carillo. We have from the Food Skaterers Association of the Philippines, they are represented by Ms. Irmina D.G. San Miguel, Cusina Nicambal Food and Catering Corporation, Chairman. Uh, Ms. Jennifer King, TVJ Food Catering, Ms. Maria Michelle Italian Royalty Catering Services, they have Elizabeth R. Rafael, 
Villa Salud Catering Services, Francisco T. Sibilia Jr., Tevillas Catering Services. From the Philippine Chamber of Food Manufacturers, they are represented by Ms. Helen Grace A. G. Baisa. Good morning. From the National, uh, the National President of the Philippine Association of Stores and Carinderia Owners is represented by Ms. Christina A. Constantino together with, with Plini Dubria, their Vice President, Marcia Tanogbanwa, their Secretary. From the Country Head of Public Affairs, Sanofi, they are represented by Ms. Cyril Lubaton. Mr. Teodoro B. Padilla, the Executive Director, is representing Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, together with Mr. Richard Binos, the Health Systems and Access Officer. Uh, from the from the Philippine Association, Philippine Hospital Association, Director Jaime Elmar, uh, Almora, their president, is representing them. From the Private Hospital Association of the Philippines, they have Attorney Jihan Hairun Natibidad, their PRO and spokesperson. From the uh, from the Cement Manufacturers Association of the Philippines, we have Mr. Cerilo M. Pestano, uh, their, executive rep uh, their executive director representing them. Uh, some of the invited guests have not yet uh, signed in, Senator. That's all. Uh, thank you very much, Secretary. And uh, uh, with that, we can commence. Uh, let me make a few introductory remarks with regard to this resolution that uh, we authored. And uh, essentially, uh, it's a very broad ranging inquiry and uh, that is the nature of this committee. So there are many areas that will be touched upon that are actually the purview of other committees, but we will look at them in uh, the macro um, regard uh, with a view towards planning. So uh, as a... Uh, um, as a uh, forward, may I simply say that forecasts coming from the international finance institutions such as the WHO, the IMF, um, the World Bank, the ADB, and other think tanks are all in unison pointing out that the Philippines will be the laggard in Asia in economic recovery. This um, indictment um, has cited the missteps the Philippines has taken to address the surge of COVID-19. Despite what is arguably the longest, the most stringent, and proportionately the most expensive lockdown in the world, um, the uh, COVID-19 situation appears to have worsened, and the economic uh, wake and cost um, of this entire uh, situation um, has really expanded to all our industries from agriculture to manufacturing as well as services. So uh, the burning question is, what should we do now? There are specific measures and concrete plans apparently from different uh, organizations and uh, line agencies and other instrumentalities of government to provide adequate financial assistance and technical to support for the recovery of the hardest hit industries. What are these programs and they, have they been adequate um, in responding to the problems that have overwhelmed so many of our MSMEs, including our major industry players? So uh, in the past, this is also an evaluation a monitoring and evaluation effort on the part of the Committee of Economic Affairs of what has been done so far, what has actually succeeded, and what has been clearly infinitely less successful. 
less successful would have to be the uh, the uh, um, const the uh, pouring of uh, much of Bayanihan one and two in the uh, financial institutions. Among them, of course, is uh, the CARES program at the DTI to help the MSMEs, of which almost 70% of the 10 billion remains uh, in balance. Uh, only 3.3 billion has uh, been lent out to micro, small, and medium enterprises under the Bayanihan II. Um, for the six billion earmark for the tourism sector, the lack of tourist activities due to quarantine and other restrictions means that uh, the fund remains unutilized to this day. So therefore, we have questions about the stimulus in the uh, financial sector and uh, would like to know if perhaps this is not better converted to loans uh, instead of loans to uh, wage subsidies such as was extended by the SSS for the hard hit industries or perhaps DOLE, job programs, a uh, new deal as it were, um, mimicking perhaps what the United States has done, expanding the notion of infrastructure to include IT regeneration as well as retraining or human infrastructure. This is all of interest to all of us. Secondly, of course, there is the urgency of providing social protection and every manner of ayuda has been met with so many complaints, uh, bringing to light the, uh, the call of DTI to finally establish a directory of informal labor. This database today is not non-existent despite the efforts of DSWD, DOLE, DILG, and its LGU counterparts. So uh, we are very, very keen to know what would really help uh, jumpstart the economy, given that uh, while the government has extended assistance, support, and undertaken many programs, they have had a uh, mixed effect and success rate. Uh, today, there is a great cry for um, financing, for retrofitting, for uh, all the efforts that industry needs to undertake. And we would like to hear from the private sector, which of these is actually the most important from the changing consumer demands and behavior, from uh, the uh, financing necessary for bulk supply chains and storage, retrofitting and retooling our factories, our restaurants, and all the other areas of manufacturing and service, uh, automation and the digitization that is so costly and difficult in this um, very um, impoverished IT landscape, and uh, the conversion to e-commerce and direct-to-customer marketing and selling. And finally, of course, the uh, great elephant in the room, the truth about employment and underemployment and uh, what can be done by government to finally do that. So I invite my uh, fellow senators. Um, I uh, recognize also Senator Gachalian, the previous uh, chairman of uh, this committee, and uh, perhaps they'd like um, to um, uh, make a few comments at the outset from uh, Senator Risa, Senator Coco, Senator uh, Sherwin Gatchalian. Madam Chair. Yes, um, I think that's Risa. Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, you're recognized. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, good morning also to our dear resource persons and our colleagues here in the Senate. Uh, I'll be asking questions that arise from three things, Madam Chair, that I think our economic managers are not yet doing well. These are opportunities to step up. First, we've not been paying attention to the economic emergency rooms that are supposed to attend to our distressed firms. We've been relying on the liquidity pumped by the BSP into the banking system, 
but the firms that need and deserve restructuring and fresh cash to survive are not getting what they need. Second, our economic managers have been looking at the macro situation. Their PowerPoint slides are updated every week. But we are not looking into economic sectors. And this is why I... And this is why I really appreciate this hearing called by our chair, Senator Aimee. Maybe there are sectors that should be written off at least for the year because of the continuing threat of infection resurgence. But maybe there are also low contact, low infection economic sectors whose recovery and growth can be front loaded, as our fiscal managers like to say. And third and last, I think this may be a good time to go beyond just the state and profit-motivated market players. The economy actually has three legs and not just two. The third leg is the voluntary sector of community collectives, nonprofits, and even corporates who join in from time to time. The community pantry movement is the inspiring little toe um, which uh, Madam Chair, the orthopedic doctors say, if um, sprained, will disable the foot from balancing the whole body. Uh, the inspiring little toe of the third leg that we are only starting to see. And I guarantee that there's more of where that came from. The third leg probably cannot stand alone, but it can help address inadequacies of the state and failures of profit-oriented players in the markets and help balance the markets. And just as there are institutions that enable markets to emerge and become efficient, analogous ones should be invented to support three-legged public action against hunger, against the infection, against corporate collapse, and for faster recovery. Madam Chair, there's already a lot of criticism that has been going around. Honestly, I'd like to be proven wrong. And in this hearing, I'd like to ask, how can we help? Salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, I share uh, Senator Ontivero's concern that so much of uh, the fiscal stimulus was uh, directed towards financial institutions, uh, resulting in what is now excess uh, liquidity and including even the moral hazards that go with that, evidenced by uh, so many stock markets around the world. So uh, um, I'd like to invite uh, Senator Sherwin. Um, do you want to make an introductory statement, please? Uh, no introductory statement, uh, Madam Chair. I'm here to uh, listen to your uh, resolution. Thank you very much, Senator Sherwin. And of course, uh, my co-chair, uh, the Chairman of Trade and Industry, Senator Coco, if uh, there are uh, any introductory statements from your part. Thank you, Madam Chair, Chairwoman. Uh, I am here to listen, and uh, I just want to tell everybody that the uh, pandemic has opened my eyes that we should focus on what is essential. Yun lang talaga. Yeah. This has forced us now to focus on what is essential in our lives uh, uh, individually and as a nation. So, <laughs> yan po na ang gawin natin. So, thank you very much, Chair, for this uh, opportunity to, uh, to be with you in this uh, hearing. Thank you so much. And uh, truly, um, the pandemic has uh, transformed us. Um, even uh, changing what we considered essential before. And the least important, the janitors, the food bearers, our uh, nursing aides have suddenly be the most important people in all our lives, certainly. And uh, with that, we call on the manufacturing sector, uh, constituting 83% uh, of our total exports, which declined, as we know, by 10%. I do not need to give you all this dreadful bad news. We read it, we read it in the newspapers daily. But uh, perhaps we should call on SAPI, Dan, and the rest. Uh, we hear so much about the global shortage of chips that has affected the cost structure of our local electronics manufacturers. And uh, I understand that initially your exports fell by a huge amount, but you have been posting gains 
since February um, of 0.4%, marginal indeed, but at least um, uh, very uh, optimistic. Can we please hear from Dan La Chica and the group of SAPI? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair Amy, and greetings to Senator Wynn, uh, Co-Chair Senator Coco, and Senator Pia. Thank you for inviting us here. Uh, truly, we thought that uh, the electronics industry would be on an uptick. In fact, in 2019, we reached a record of $43.3 billion, and uh, we were hoping to grow by another 5% in uh, 2020. But because of circumstances that we all know about, uh, we contracted by uh, close to 9% uh, versus our projection of 5% uh, growth. And so that brought us down to 39.7, which in reality was actually better than expected because when COVID hit and we were uh, forced to shut down uh, for a month, a month and a half until we were able to get some support from IATF and DTI ramped up to 30% and then uh, eventually to 100%, uh, we were able to recover to uh, $39.7 billion. And we hope by 2021, we can grow at another 7% to reach $42.5 billion. But then again, the challenges continue. Uh, for, for example, and if I may uh, enumerate a few, um, as you know, uh, and maybe uh, not to be discussed in this meeting, as you know, uh, while CREATE was, was passed into a law and the good news is corporate income tax was lowered, there are still concerns that uh, the law of the long-term effects on the uh, <clears throat> incentives rationalization. I understand the premise, but uh, we realize that you know the operating cost in the Philippines is still quite high uh, compared to, for example, Vietnam and Thailand, who are which are countries are raking in actually the foreign direct investments. And what's going to happen even with the transition period is. We will continue to operate. We won't see a mass exodus of electronics companies, but uh, given the attractive incentives and the lower operating cost of, uh, you know, to name a few, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and even Indonesia, um, the concern really is we will be stuck with legacy products. And what I mean by legacy products is, for example, uh, if you have devices like smartphones uh, that only have uh, last for about six months to a year, then that's what we call legacy products. And so if we don't attract uh, expansion investments and even new investments, at the end of the transition period, when we're stuck with the uh, legacy products will be, which will be obsoleted, you can expect a, tra a movement of several electronics companies out of the Philippines. Now, this is not like uh, the sky is going to fall. Some are going to stay here. Some are still going to run legacy products, but you will see a, a significant erosion of the electronics industry. Um, so we are seeing some expansion investments, but new investments, uh, significant investments, uh, like I said, we're not seeing all of those. So that's one uh, concern. Uh, another concern really would be, you know, with the travel ban, and I understand we want to protect our citizens, we want to protect our borders, but the reality is we have expansion pro uh, uh, projects that require technical support. And uh, so, like, for example, even if you have uh, technical support coming from uh, the U.S. where they have vaccines already, the travel restrictions are delaying uh, the, the entry of this uh, much desired foreign direct investments in uh, expenses. So we could use some help there. Uh, the other concern would be the high operating costs. By the way, the context of all this uh, uh, request for help uh, okay, is not so much as um, support for the workers in the sense of subsidies, because as you know, uh, mostly especially with multinationals, even during the shutdown in COVID, they, they continued to provide uh, salaries and, and wages to their employees, even though we were shut down because the cost of hiring and training would be more expensive. The problem though is, you know, uh, uh, as I've enumerated, I'll add to add that the higher operating cost, uh, we all know about the power cost, we all know about the utilities cost, 
but uh, the COVID has added, uh, exacerbated logistics costs, especially, uh, and, and delays for that matter, especially when you have infections in key government offices, which obviously we need to deal with. And so you have uh, the delays in, uh, in uh, uh, product cycle time. You have the higher operating costs, even in uh, shuttling our employees, because basically we've justified putting in partitions in our shuttle buses so you can do a uh, 100%, uh, percent, use the 100% capacity. And we've shown that with the clean environment in electronics and the shuttle buses, the infection rate was less than 1%, even during the upsurge. Uh, that we've seen. So we've requested reconsideration, but uh, we just approved 50%. So to give you an idea for the big companies, the additional shuttle cost is 10 million pesos a month. 10 million pesos a month. And so if you factor in with all this, uh, uh, these hindrances, multinationals have actually moved production out of the Philippines. In fact, in March of A and April of this uh, last year, we saw 10 to 15% of volumes that were transferred out. And the, the possibility of getting those volumes back up is nil to none. Why is that? Because obviously multinationals have their own uh, contingency plans and uh, minimizing their country risks. So it's almost impossible to get those back. So. What we really want to do is uh, leverage on what we have and just asking for uh, government to help us in terms of, you know, um, considering the entry of vaccinated service supports, uh, minimizing the high operating costs and causing and the delays, the delays, whether they cause of infection uh, of and maybe automating the systems of our government agencies so we don't have to rely on physical transactions. Uh, because, for example, um, customs has improved a lot. But, for example, if you have a bog down of their automated systems and we don't have reasonable alternatives, then these translate to delays and, again, worsen the reputation of the Philippines to deliver these products. Uh, the other thing that's hurting us is when you have uh, policies that are uh, done without adequate public consultation. Uh, for example, and not to pick on DNR, we have this <clears throat> specific limit on copper. And uh, when we went did our own research, this uh, the spec for dissolved copper is not anywhere close to what you have in develop even in developed countries. The, the closest standard we could see is in Thailand, which is for drinking water, and that there's no way we should be comparing drinking water to effluents. So to, to build a treatment facility, to try to even attempt to come close to that, it's going to co uh, cost, you know, a, a billion dollars uh, in uh, CapEx and a couple of hundred thousand dollars on operating costs. So this kinds of thing should be done with adequate public consultation. A and again, as we move, uh, obviously for manufacturing, we can't go 100% working from home, but uh, we try to do our best, even in terms of customer service support, engineering support, uh, the the ICT infrastructure, the uh, bandwidth, the reliability of our internet, Wi-Fi connections is also going to be a problem. And Senator uh, Senator uh, Risa mentioned um, retooling, and not immediately, but long term. What we're trying to do is, given the challenge in a Asia, ASEAN, and the world, we can't build wafer fabs here in the Philippines, so we cannot grow the semiconductor side of our industry, which is 70% of the exports. But what we plan to do is build up IC design capability, which is upstream. We design the chips here in the Philippines, and it's fabricated outside. And so we're putting up a science and technology center centered in Region 4A, and uh, we are working with DPI and DOST to support uh, the, the new, this new industry, uh, which actually could translate to another two to three billion dollars in five years of exports, and uh, additionally about a hundred thousand new workers. So we would need help to fund that uh, endeavor, and then uh, the other element of that is R and D across the board to support not just the big companies who can't afford it, but even SMEs. So I think those are the major uh, things that we would need help on. Again, like I said, 
uh, the multinationals, the electronics companies are very capable of supporting their workers. It's just the help we need with infrastructure, government legislation, and funding for future projects. We do have, our, we do have uh, S, uh, not S, uh, not small, but medium enterprises in our supply chain. So therefore, uh, we may need to focus on helping them, especially the, the layoffs we've seen in the industry are not so much for the big companies, but for the medium uh, uh, enterprises that support the industry. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, Dan, just a quick question. To what do you ascribe the 0.4% uh, gain in uh, February of 2021? I think a couple of months ago that was reported out uh, to the great cheer of everyone. Okay. There have been uh, specific uh, sectors that uh, have shown uh, demand, and that is uh, an increase in demand, I should say, and uh, the growth areas were in medical and uh, industrial instrumentation for obvious reasons, uh, COVID-related. Also, automotive, but uh, automotive not so much as the conventional engines, but uh, uh, specifically for hybrid and uh, electronic vehicles and uh, self-driving cars. Uh, and commercial and industrial products, especially as we go to work from home setups. So those are the growth areas. Uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, Madam Chairman, about the global uh, semiconductor shortage. Uh, this was, uh, I guess, you know, uh, it stemmed from last year with the disruption and supply chain. The nice thing about our industry is since we continue to uh, use gadgets and technology, the demand doesn't really shrink significantly. The demand is there. The problem is with the capability to support that demand. Of course, our supply chain uh, was impacted, uh, the operations concerns that we've had. But since we've had that demand last year that was not served, it has built up and that's translated uh, to a shortage in processing equipment. What used to be three to six months in semiconductor equipment processing it's now, has now stretched out anywhere from nine to 12 months. So even if you had the people, even if you had the factory, if you don't have the, fa the uh, equipment to produce those parts, and these are uh, semiconductor wafer fabs around the world because as you know, we have the back end assembly test and packaging. We don't have enough wafers to produce, especially you've heard about the shortage in automotive electronics. We're playing catch up, but then again, uh, as we've said, if you have disrupt disruptions with the lockdowns and operational concerns, it's uh, again, taxing our ability to uh, catch up with the demand. But those are the three areas that we've seen growth in, medical, industrial, and automotive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dan. And uh, to my colleagues, I think the message is loud and clear. It's still vaccination that will open up the economy and uh, also the automation of government services that's uh, long delayed, but uh, uh, really confronts us today. Any, uh, any uh, further questions uh, to the uh, uh, semiconductor and SAPI group from any of the senators, please? Risa, is uh, that a question or do we proceed with Conweb? Yes, Risa, please. Yes, Madam yes, Chair, I just a follow-up question. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Lachica. Actually, while uh, Mr. Lachica was speaking, Madam Chair, I was thinking about the possible links of his um, not just request for assistance from government, but also offer of the potentials of the semiconductor industry uh, in terms of telemedicine, possibilities for telemedicine, and even in relation uh, possibly to the BPO sector. So I'd appreciate um, any response of Mr. Lachica comment on, on, on my question that, well, I, I see, Madam Chair, that the BPO sector has been quite resilient and we all know that this is because, yes, the whole world has gone online. And when there are transactions online, there will be more demand for work from our BPOs. Uh, this sector is stimulated by economic demand from abroad, so it can grow much faster, in fact, than we can recover here. Uh, so what kind, and if Mr. Lachica would also know, now, what kind and level of support has been requested by the BPO sector? As for example, it may intersect with the request for support from the semiconductor industry. How much of that support is already forthcoming? And just to uh, ask about a specific example, will the Madam EMO... Yes, Madam Chair. 
Ah, okay. And lastly, will the EO that allows anyone to buy broadband from the satellites of, say, Elon Musk's Starlink enable more BPO workers to work from home despite the pandemic? So um, any of these points, Madam Chair, that Mr. Lachika may uh, care to comment on in relation to his earlier remarks? Uh, Senator uh, Risa, thank you. Or other resource persons. Yes, yes, Mr. Lachika. Just to clarify, Senator Risa, uh, we were thinking of conducting a separate hearing for services and All right, uh, we will then invite and more thoroughly uh, discuss the issues of the BPO because as you rightly yes. observed it's a clear growth sector uh, mm -hmm. given the cost cutting and uh, difficulties throughout the world but I'm sure mm -hmm. Dan has something to say about uh, you, the supply Chair. and manufacturing side and again thank you Senator Risa and Madam Chair Actually, when I mentioned the growth sectors, that's a, 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 a proactive action already from the industry uh, globally as well as locally. Because, uh, as I've said, we recognize the uh, the need for a transition to our mindset of working from home. Mm -hmm. That's why commercial mm -hmm. and industrial products which cater to those needs. Uh, uh, communication needs as well have taken uh, an uptick in terms of demand mm -hmm. and we've also I've also mentioned medical electronics in fact mm -hmm. several member companies have started building uh, uh, equipment specifically for COVID um, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact some of them have actually retooled not to build ele medical electronics on only but uh, and i'm sure conweb can speak to that but mm -hmm. they've retooled to produce uh, ppes uh, masks yes. so we're very responsive to that but the other thing that uh, uh, i would like to add although it wasn't mentioned is that we're also responsive to the needs of uh, distance learning or education mm -hmm. that actually started like uh, uh, it started off with the CSR in terms of member companies donating their uh, uh, equipment and laptops to the school. Oh, one thing that would help in that area is if we uh, expedite the IRR so that mm -hmm. companies can donate computers and laptops without being uh, hit by taxes on the original mm -hmm. value of, of, of the equipment. Um, IRRs of which, Mr. La Chica? Uh, I, I think uh, it was part of the creation. Of the donations. Oh, yes. Yeah. We've been working on um, the older laptops and uh, computers to be given to the schools yeah, and government offices, but uh, they've been hit with taxes on the original cost of the machines. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's been a problem. I think there are DOF representatives here who please bring this plea to uh, the office. Thank you, Madam Chair. And Mr. Lachika, in addition to the mention you made of distance learning, uh, about which, or even more broadly, about the state of education and teacher training in the Philippines, which uh, Sen Sherwin uh, made a very important, uh, delivered a very important privileged speech about several weeks ago. I take note, Mr. Lachika, the point you made about remote monitor, or rather, I, I link it to my concern also about remote monitoring in terms of our pandemic response. And, and I really appreciate your comments, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sorry, thank you, Madam um, Chair. If there are no further questions uh, to SAPI and Mr. Lachika, let's proceed to the garment sector, um, which, as we know, uh, constitutes quite a large part of the manufacturing and export of the Philippines. I think both CONWEP and uh, CONJEP are here. Uh, would CONWEP like uh, to comment? Isa pang suki nitong committing to si Marita sa Consilio, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Madam Chair. And... Uh, uh, good morning also to uh, Senators Hontiveros, uh, Cachalian, and Pimentel. And thank you for this opportunity again uh, as the Suke. Um, quickly, our numbers shows that uh, from 20, uh, just a brief background, from 2019, we hit us. The industry was down by 34%. It was really a, a, a big blow to the industry, um, uh, especially uh, happening around the uh, March, April up to July of last year, even if the goods or materials were with us during the lockdown, um, even though if the goods and materials were with us during the lockdown, um, the buyers, the buyers still, 
niya. The buyer still, uh, the buyer still, um, uh, you know, instructed us not to cut the materials and then using the force majeure. So we had cancellations right in the middle of the pandemic uh, last year. Um, uh, apparel was mostly hit uh, and and also the travel goods. Con Confederation of wearables includes the bags and the shoes and apparel. And uh, between the three industries, uh, sub-industries, I think travel goods and shoes was mostly hit more than, it's still in the double digit, more than the apparel, simply because nobody was buying the bags and the shoes abroad, okay? However, uh, like uh, there was a sliver of hope like Dan, about January to February of this year, uh, we had a 5% increase in export for garments, garments alone. Um, uh, travel goods and footwear still on a double digit negative mark uh, for January to February, same period year on year, 2020 to 2021. Um, this move, I think, is happening more on the casual clothes. Um, uh, simply because, the, um, uh, you know, when you, you call the factories, are so meaning our value chain is getting uh, thinner because we are not really producing the higher end products now like the suits uh you know uh, the, the things that you use for work so we're doing mostly the home um, home uh, apparel uh casual clothes uh which would have a lower lower lva or local value added content but uh we uh, just to operate a factory, we accept this, okay? Just to operate the factories, we accept this. So um, with this, uh, I will just make it quick and short since I'm suket naman to all of you. Okay, we have three image concerns and three image needs. Um, and then um, uh, the future one um, would be um, discussed later. Like when we say image it, it's like we're looking like a, for intervention in the next 30 to 90 days. And the first one is the image classification of the manufacturing subsector export industry as part of the A4 group in the INITA or the so that we can be prioritized in the vaccination. Because uh, um, uh, we were looking into this and we were working this out with the DTI. Um, um, uh, parang we're still working. I'm, I'm sure Dan. Other now, Right now, garments is not included in A4 as an essential worker, right? Yes, yeah. uh, something like that, ma'am. Like, like I, I think even Dan, Dan, are you, uh, I think across the board, the manufacturing is not no, really... No, you don't think manufacturing is all included aside from food and health. And uh, as a result, uh, many employers are protesting because they're unable to open. Um, even the BPO sector is not yes, included in A4. Yes, That's correct. correct. Yes, ma'am. So uh, yes. our group, yeah, the garments, uh, the manufacturing, especially the expert manufacturing coalition, which includes Rayon Tal's group and Dan Lachica's group, our group has been very uh, upfront with the government on this to include us in the image of vaccination sub-level group A4. And with this, it could solve the problem of uh, the cost of doing business in the pandemic. Uh, Dan was able to uh, briefly discuss this in detail, like the cost of shuttle alone is really killing us already. So uh, if we are vaccinated, uh, the people, you know, uh, we are, we cannot work from home. I, I wish we could work from home, but um, most of the workers could work, work from home. So we really need this uh, because you run factories of what, minimum 1,500, 2,000 people, and the infections happening every Every week, you, you, we get it. Like uh, yesterday, I was talking to Cebu. Uh, there's another infection in, in a, um, a group factory of six. So it, it's just too scary. So if we can be declassified, if the Senate can work on this economic affairs group, the trade, it would really be appreciated. The second one that we would like is related to labor and dollar. Okay, and I, I think I, I forgot to I discuss think there's, this. Uh, all our representatives here, so uh, perhaps uh, they will let uh, yes, your call. I think that you said Tutai is around. Okay, um, and this is related to the Bayanihan 1, 2, 3 deployment, uh, you know, um, uh, when, 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 what's this? When the ayuda, when the, when the subsidies were given out, okay? What happened was um, because the subsidy, 
especially coming from Dole, um, was limited. Uh, what happened was uh, this was uh, this was ruled out like um, we're in some of the factories were eased out, and then in a, in our set and and this created like uh, some form of industrial relation um, concerns amongst the factories. Done, and then some companies. If you're an older company, that that's the general uh, um, basic premise. If you're an older company, like you you've been existing for like 10, 15 years already, then parang you don't qualify into that parameter. And so the younger companies that were formed like four, six years uh, ago only were the ones that were able to avail of UDAS or the subsidies. And this okay, really Jeff, if you don't mind, I just wanted to clarify perhaps the representative of Dole, Yusek Anna Dion was here, Asik Tutai was here. Uh, may we inquire from your part because Ayuda came in several forms. Some of it uh, was actually managed by KSWD and uh, the rest, of course, camp and so on via Dole. So I'm wondering which one we're referring to. Perhaps Dole can uh, um, enlighten all of us. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm just referring to the camp since they're here. Okay. Uh, the camp because uh, what happened was specific to the manufacturing sector. There was uh, when some, so we operate factories. Okay. Uh, investors come here and operate 20,000 worker uh, labor force. And this 20,000 normally would be we would be dispersed in five to six sub factories, but they're coming from the same group. So if you have a fa a group investor of uh, mm -hmm. 20,000 workers operating seven factories, three factories did not get it and four factories got it. We are really, really right at this very moment. We are really still trying to solve it. They, they have this clamor. Why are we eased out? Why didn't we get it? So if we could ask Dole to sit on this again, I'm willing to sit down and give you the names of the, the, the group, uh, the companies that um, uh, uh, even in the camp, they did not get it. And then when it was rolled out again in the SSS, some of them still did not get it. So you ended up having a worker who got the camp, the SSS, but another worker in another company did not get okay. either. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so okay. Kalagang, it's really, and it, this is not really, it might, it, you know, it's like, how would I call it? It's like kumukulo na, na volcano. Oh. <laughs> because na, it, na, the people, the workers are really nag in it. Every time you talk to them, when I do my, um, uh, uh, going around the factories recently, it's really coming out strong. So if we can look into something uh, to that, and I'm willing to sit down with Dole and on this, uh, well, uh, Madam Chair. The third concern, Asik Dion or Asik Tutai or anyone from Dole, um, make a quick reply. Perhaps we can help them in that regard. Opo, uh, Madam Senator Amy, my name is Nikki uh, Asik Nikki. Uh, yes. Dolly. Yes, that's right. Oh, I'm, okay, that's right. Yes, uh, could you just reply? Ang alam ko kasi kulang na kulang naman yung pera ninyo eh. Uh, totoo po yun, uh, Madam Chair, kaya nagkaroon po tayo ng prioritization. Uh, yung Camp 1 po, where we only used our uh, 2020 budget, wala po kaming talaga under the bayan ni Hando. And so, uh, we prioritized micro, small, and medium enterprises po. Uh, but hindi naman po, having said that, uh, we also catered to the large um, companies, but very limited po. Tama po yun. And uh, we were only able to reach about um, 600 plus thousand workers out of the, uh, I think we, we reached about 1.6 or 2 million workers during that time. And uh, the, the way the program was run is uh, first come, first serve basis. So yung nangyari po siguro doon sa companies na binabanggit po ni, ni Ma'am Tess, uh, kung dispersed po yan in different locations or in different regions and the application po is uh, parang uh, kung saan din po yung jurisdiction, uh, doon din po sila sa Dole uh, Regional Office concerned mag apply But when the... But when the fund is very limited, then talaga pong uh, ganun ma'am ang mangyayari. Nagbabudget uh, preparation ngayon, ASEC to tayo. Humihingi ba kayo ng karagdagan? Kasi alam ko sa si Secretary Bell yun, na nakaraang taon, eh, talagang humihingi ng dagdag. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, marami po kami under tier one, uh, under tier two po. We have uh, requested for additional funds under adjustment measures program and also the government internship program po. Uh, because uh, we know po na ito po yung uh, nagagamit po ngayon uh, for some sort of employment guaranteed scheme para sa atin pong mga uh, okay. mga kababayan. Let me know yeah. also, Madam. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, enjoy na lang, uh, Dole, na makipag-usap na lang sa Conweb at sa CP para kahit pa paano matulungan naman natin ang mga industriya na nag-export. -e eh, ilan na nga lang sila eh. Dapat tulungan talaga natin. Opo. So, Madam so, Senator, let me just po uh, report that under the Bayanihan 1 and 2, under the manufacturing sector po, we were able to benefit uh, 111,258 workers coming from 1,361 establishments nationwide. Thank you, Paul. Pero payat, napakapayat na na kung tutuusin. Yes, Paul. Uh, yes, Paul. Truly, Madam Senator. But yes, uh, we can uh, engage din po with uh, Ma'am Marites. Uh, yes, ano yes. naman po, lagi naman din po kayo nag-uusap ni Secbelio, Ma'am. And the way we approach this also is either company level or uh, parang industry level po dahil meron nga pong mga nag nagsisik pa talaga ng assistance hanggang ngayon. Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. Uh, we have uh, we have two more burning issues with regard to the garment industry, if you don't mind. Uh, um, if we could Very go quick, kasi napakarami po. Unang-una, ano na yung status ng EU GSP? Kasi uh, Senator Pimentel was here earlier and he's our foreign affairs. May mga DTI rin tayo at NEDA. Uh, ano na nangyari sa EU GSP? Di ba nag-expire last year ng September? Tapos yung US GSP na nag-expire nung uh, last year. Uh, Siyempre, pinangangambahan natin kasi parating sinasabi yung mga human rights violation, tatanggalin na daw tayo sa GSP ng EU at saka ng US. Ano bang balita rito kasi nag-expire na yan last year? Um, uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, for the US GSP, I think the Department of Trade and the Department of Foreign Affairs is working as uh, relayed to us recently in a meeting um, which were also part of uh, by USEC Perry, uh, that they're trying to work this out, uh, with, um, specifically working it out with the USTR group uh, of uh, 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 President Biden. Uh, they are trying to manage the concerns of human rights, I think, and then um, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, the relationship, especially with, uh, let uh, um, we're looking at the positive that um, it can it can they will not they will not impose the, uh, this this thing for the U.S. side on the Thank EU side, ma'am. I think yes for the, the EU, EU side. Government. Yes, you were saying. Sorry, the, the EU side. Uh, I think this was addressed already. Uh, they're trying. To, um, uh, this was also addressed uh, recently by the Department of Trade. There were there was a. Uh, they're trying to articulate the human rights issues uh, not to form part of any uh, violation towards the EU GSP plus program. And uh, and they're trying to single this out. S since the EU GSP plus program is very specifically attached to specific industries like um, uh, 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 my group, Apparel, and uh, the tuna, the fishing group, uh, they're, they're trying to look into other ways of monitoring this um, compliance our group through labor uh, programs. So, but on the on the general, also uh, according to DTI, they have worked into this, and um, it might just push through. Yes, uh, we will not get um, any suspension so far. Sana pa. Far, yeah. So far, so far, so Senator uh, Pimentel will uh, need your help uh, in this regard. Dahil uh, uh, yung discussion siguro sa West Philippine Sea, wag naman tamaan yung uh, ating uh, mga exporter. Yes, ma'am. Uh, going to that, uh, I, I, I will go to the accession to the CPTPP and, uh, yes, and uh, so. um, uh, the committee of Senator Pimentel. We just um, had hearings on the RCEP and then the CPTPP and other bilateral such as those with the preferential uh, free trade agreements with India and uh, other neighbors. Ano? 
Uh, ano na nangyari dyan? May pakinabang ba yan para sa ating uh, exporters? Si Nadan at saka si Conjep, Conweb. So yes, Marites, any uh, any comments on the uh, RCEP uh, benefiting uh, your end as well as the CPTPP? The RCEP would definitely benefit us for the local market, but basically it can increase the bit on the imports uh, because we don't, RCEP would basically, uh, would also um, benefit us in, if it's in place eventually for the export market. But the one that could we would really like to push is the the defunct TPP of the Obama administration, which became now the CPPP, a damning piece. <laughs> Um, and I think DTI worked already and uh, initiated discussions with New Zealand, the depository uh, signatory to the CTPP. And if this can really be pushed, Senator Pimentel and Senator uh, Marcos, that the government would push for this, this would really open our, our industry uh, to 1311 nations uh, that control more than half of the world GDP. So this would this is very important for us. If we cannot get any bilateral direct coordination with the United States, which at the moment with the with the Biden administration uh, might be a bit tough to have, you know, a, a, a bilateral free trade agreement. But that would really be the free flow for us. Mom, before I leave this, uh, one last is. Um, I think uh, uh, my associate uh, Rosette uh, of the Confederation of PPE Manufacturers, uh, which we, we just call like it. to ask, perhaps uh, Senator Pimentel has some ideas um, regarding uh, the CPTPP. Is there any way that we can push this forward? Because, uh, well, in uh, in very clear terms, Vietnam is really whacking us in the U.S. market. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is there anything we can do, uh, Senator Coco? Maybe we can push ng konte sa committees natin. Yeah, siguro yeah. ma'am. I'll call for us a hearing specifically on that subject matter. Nako, thank you very much, Senator thank Coco. Oh, malaking bagay yan, Marites. Pasalamat ka kagad dyan. Um, Salamat po, Senator. The elephant in the room is, of course, the PPE production. This very controversial retooling undertaken by uh, uh, at least two of the exporters to be able to produce face masks and uh, other PPEs within the country, at which they failed to derive much, uh, uh, much benefit. So maybe we can hear from the group of the local PPE production. Senator Risa, this is a, a really depressing story, Senator Sherwin. Yeah, uh, Senator Riza and sure, uh, Senator Gatchele and Senator Pimentel, I would like to introduce, pass on, but before I pass this on to our Conweb is the sister mother company of the CPP, PPE Manufacturers Group. Uh, led by Reset Carillo. The image act that we need here is the image movement of the pandemic bill that is currently in the Senate. Uh, and there are four versions of this by Senator Marcos, Senator Riveros, Senator Pangilinan, and Senator Recto. And I think there were two versions uh, uh, um, uh, that filed uh, on the House last year. So we would need legal, um, uh, we would need um, you, uh, the Senate uh, uh, legislative um, uh, things to move to move things so that we can sell. And I would like to give uh, Rosette Carillo, who is the executive director of the CPP PPE Association. Okay. Hi, uh, yes, Rosette, uh, good good recognize. Uh, Let's proceed. Thank you, Chair, Madam Chair. So uh, a quick background lang on the Coalition of Philippine Manufacturers of PPE. Uh, we were called in by the government in early March, April last year, during the height of the uh, unfortunate uh, deaths, especially for the uh, health frontliners. And so uh, our, in CONWEP, two of our uh, major high-quality manufacturer exporters of brand global brands repurposed. Uh, in, in, uh, as a group, by July, uh, we formed the Coalition of Philippine Manufacturers of PPE, or CPMP. And the whole group, represented by five companies, reinvested about $35 US million to repurpose the, the, their portions of their factories to produce um, medical-grade PPE. 
And uh, the foremost concern also is to retain the factory jobs that they have. Uh, with the repurposing of these factories, we're able to retain about 7,500 workers in the factories. And um, during the course of the time under Bayanian 1, 2, uh, these factories were ready to produce medical grade PPE. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, the, the way the government purchases PPE, it is subject to certain uh, standard rules um, for purchasing. No? So we were uh, subjected to the lowest cost. And unfortunately, also at that same time, the Philippine market was flooded with very low cost um, uh, PPEs from China. Some of them are even substandards. So we would like to call uh, the attention of the Senate uh, uh, to, to, to hear the plea of the exporters who have repurposed and reinvested to have the policy, especially under the pandemic act, to really focus on buying Filipino made PPE. And second is to support uh, the, the stockpiling program, which CPMP is also proposing, so that the Philippines is ready when the whole world shuts down its supply of PPE. Internally, we are ready to handle any kind of health crisis. And these are two elements that we need support from uh, the Senate and uh, Congress as a whole uh, we would like to specifically uh, address our plea to Senator Rocco, uh, the Committee of Trade, because the latest information we had in the development of the Pandemic Act uh, is that it is uh, being proposed by Senator Go as the head of the Committee on Health to be handled by the Committee on Trade. So I'm not sure, sir, if it was referred to you, uh, but this is really an urgent matter for us. Uh, again, Madam Chair, thank you very much for this opportunity. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Senator Risa, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't have any questions for uh, Ms. Rosette. I just like to make of record that uh, I support uh, the various points she has made, including the request for continuing support from us here in the Senate. I heard firsthand ever since last year the valiant uh, and really you know nationalistic patriotic pro filipino efforts of the CPMP to respond to government's own request for them to retool uh, their production as as she has narrated to us and also to offer a uh, medical grade international standard philippine made PPEs of uh, various items the whole PPE set uh, and um I filed a resolution, in a, uh, aside from the bill, one of the four bills that she mentioned pending here in the Senate, uh, including that of uh, the good chair. I also filed a resolution to inquire into why uh, we did not procure uh, priority and more of the Philippine-made PPE, seeing as they have uh, they have actually complied with uh, global and, and national uh, health standards. And moving forward, Madam Chair, uh, I support and I look forward to the committee through the leadership of the chair supporting the call of CPMP to enable uh, their uh, leading the stockpiling of Philippine requirements for PPEs moving forward, uh, given how, for example, the Singapore uh, health minister, or rather education minister said, we're probably going to have to manage COVID-19 for four to five more years. And even further down the road, uh, we have to be uh, resilient for any possible uh, other pandemics coming our way and the way of the world. Uh, thank you again, uh, Ms. Rosette, and to the whole CPMP. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Madam thank Chair. you very much. And uh, we call on uh, Chairman uh, Coco, who seems to be the man of the hour <laughs> right now. The, for the information of my fellow senators, the Trade Committee is uh, such an interesting uh, committee, so uh, you might want it the uh, next uh, term. <laughs> anyway, uh, for the information of everybody and uh, and Ms. Carillo, the, four, the said four bills have not yet been re, uh, re, uh, no, re referred to the uh, to my committee, but. If, if, should they be uh, referred to my committee, we will conduct a, a hearing immediately. But if we have time, Madam Chair, can I ask uh, some uh, background information from uh, Rosette, from Ms. Carillo? Yes, of course. Oh. Uh, the chairman of the oh. Trade Committee, who really has jurisdiction over this matter, 
but uh, given our effort to uh, discuss economic planning going forward into the new normal and the post-pandemic, uh, let's therefore hear from Chairman Pimentel. To prepare me for the hearing of the said uh, four uh, bills again. Uh, so you are, ma'am, uh, you, you are the garment manufacturers, Tama uh, and you were asked by the government to repurpose your factories uh, to produce uh, personal protective equipment or gears, medical yeah. gears. Tama po ba yun? Tama yun, sir. Pero Tama just to okay. add to that, uh, CPMP actually represents mostly repurposed factories. No, They are from garments, they are from electronics. Uh, and our founding, uh, one of our founding member also has been in the business of me producing medical grade PP for more than 38 years. Po. Uh, so it's a mix. We also have one Australian investor who have repurposed to produce the very country's very first fabric for uh, medical grade PPE. Okay, so, so we're trying to meet uh, the whole uh, supply chain, sir. Uh, practi practically, the entire group repurposed. Except one, yung isang may, yeah. may, 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 may one original uh, yes. uh, manufacturer. Okay, so you answer the government's uh, call, you produce these uh, PPEs, and then uh, you save 7,500 jobs or less, tama po ba yan? Uh, tama po. All, all of you, so because the, the factories uh, kept on uh, uh, producing and uh, going, and yet the, is, the government disappointed you by not buying your production? Ganun po ba yan? Yes, Senator. Uh, unfortunately, we go through uh, the process. If I may, if I may, uh, sir, no? dun sa huling, dun sa huling, um, dun sa huling uh, bidding uh, of 4.8 billion, I think they only got 14% of total, 86% went uh, overseas. And uh, this is following, kasi sunod-sunod yung mga bidding, di ba, sa DOH, PITC, sa DBM, uh, Yung 4 billion na, na 4.8 na dati, tapos may 4 billion naman, tuloy-tuloy po ito eh. Kaya Chairman Pimentel, gawa natin ang paraan na sila naman ang bilang. Yeah, the, the, but, the, but, the, but the group's production could have fulfilled the 4.8 billion order of the government. Tama po ba yes. yun? Order uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, the group's production can uh, can actually um, uh, fulfill the 4.8 need of the country. It and, will just roughly be about 7,000 to 8,000. Uh, according to my old records, in addition to being able to produce the amounts uh, required for the 4.8 billion, they could have ratcheted up to an additional 25,000 jobs. That's correct, Madam Chair. Okay, and then uh, your allegation is uh, some of those uh, winning bidders in the 4.8 billion or even in the earlier contracts supply their government with substandard ginamit yung word the substandard eh. so not meaning to say not medical grade ppes tama po ba yun yes uh, senator within the context of compliance in terms of international standard uh, certified by international bodies for the international use of ppe so in that context uh we do say our our members have cited and they have seen the products that it is seemed to be substandard in within the context of the international testing uh, standards. But uh, but but as as uh, as announced as re as written, our government's uh, standards are below international standards. Is that your observation? No, 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 Senator. Uh, what the conflict I think uh, came out in terms of the specifying the bidding requirements uh the standards has always been there we have been compliant with fda in terms of uh, certification and accreditation and so with other uh, international testing certifying bodies uh the challenge was more on uh the requirements that was uh, stated in those bidings no pero kahit uh if I, but the, if, I, if I may, um, I kind of started looking into this, uh, Senator Kokoro said, ang nangyari kasi, okay naman yung standard, ang sabi ng DOH, yung US standard, level 4, yung medical grade talaga, level 4, kasi iba-iba naman yung PPE, ano, dun sa mga border control, okay lang yung level 1 or 2, pero level 4 dapat talaga para surgical. Okay naman yun, kaya lang siningit 
yung level 4 or equivalent. May or equivalent. Kaso, wala namang equivalent yun kung walang testing. Ang nangyari, wala namang capacity mag-testing yung DOH or yung PTIC or even the DBM. So, eto nga, I think just last week, may mga substandard na naman na nahagip ng customs. Okay, kasi yung pagsingit ng or equivalent actually introduced discretion. That's the problem. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. That is the problem uh, when we introduce uh, discretion, you know. So, sige po, maganda nga na to, but uh, when, we finally, when we finally get to hear this, uh, ma'am, uh, I hope the association will uh, be ready with all of the, you know, all of the facts, the figures, and the, siguro, even the uh, uh, government uh, invitations to bid, uh, as well as some bidding contracts kung meron po. We'll we'll get to the bottom of this because I think it's unfair, no, to to ask. Uh, although although it's it's it would save jobs, no, we ask uh, factories to repurpose, and yet at uh, the same time disappoint them by not buying their <laughs> their output, <laughs> their produce. <laughs> so, and then uh, and then uh, in time in that in 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 the time of a pandemic, our resources uh ano pa to foreign uh, for, i'm sure foreign reserves ang ginamit uh, uh, uh are used to pay other manufacturers or uh, other workers so medyo medyo hindi masyadong ano yun, hindi masyadong consistent in the in the time of an emergency like a pandemic thank you madam chair chair chairwoman Thank you, uh, Senator Coco, and uh, we're counting on you uh, upon the rerouting of these four bills. I think Senator Binay raised her hand first, and Senator Sherwin Gatchalian as well. So, so ladies first muna, Nancy. Magandang umaga, Madam Chair, and um, salamat. Hindi, tatanong ko lang sana sa si, inyo, si Madam Chairwoman, yung sinabi mo na or equivalent, walang ginawang standard ng DOH kung ano yung or equivalent, tama po ba? Wala nga eh, sapul nga si Senator Coco, nagkaroon ng discretion eh, kanya-kanyang diskarte na siguro. Um, uh, and the uh, real problem there, of course, is that there is no testing naman. So, uh, paano natin alam kung ang equivalent or comparable standard nga ba yun? So, yun, ang nangyari. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Chairwoman, gusto ko lang ko tanong kay Rosette, since the orders did not come, uh, paano ho nagsusurvive ngayon itong mga factories that, ano, shifted? I yeah, I think I can answer that now on behalf of Rosette. Um, most of the factories that repurpose actually are, because when you repurpose, ma'am, it's just a portion of the factory. Okay, it's just a portion of the factory. You just need a, a small portion. So technically, they're, they're there. And once we finish the orders of the government, they're there. Yeah, and uh, we're looking for other orders to come in intermittently. So basically, um, they're semi-closed um, uh, and we only open it up when when we get orders. Yeah. Uh, some of the factors that we purposed for, for, from the electronics group uh, on the mask also, uh, it's, it, it's a very, you know, if you have 1,000 square meters of space, you just need um, 10,000 square meters of space, you just need about 200, 400 of that, no, uh, 20 to 40 percent of that. So, uh, if you don't have the order, especially for the coveralls and um, the uh, the the gowns, that we we are looking at the export market at the moment. We're trying to get in the export market. Wala po kami so, na order na. Export so, market na so, PPE. Yeah, nakakatawa, no. <laughs> tayo magsusupply sa labas tapos yung sariling atin hindi natin masupply no, uh, uh, yeah. Marita, so ibig sabihin na, na ito, when you mentioned na semi-close, would this translate to loss of jobs? Yes ma'am uh, And so more or less, that. ilan ilan yung nawala ng trabaho uh, dahil hindi okay. nag-order ng TPE or government na Yes, ma'am. For this, uh, ma'am, uh, I can give you the figure of December 2020. We retrenched 25,000 workers in December 2020 out of 120 in the Conweb group lang, my group lang alone. We retrenched 25,000 workers. Out of these 25,000 workers, 
uh, there was about 3,000 to 3,500 workers coming from those three companies that repurposed. So um, um, uh, about 3,500 coming from three factories mm -hmm. from the garments group that repurposed. So um, it could have saved 3,500 jobs. Uh, uh, but we, you know, we continued to work. We got the orders from the government around December, January. So yung yung mga naiwan na workers na lang na naretain namin yun ang gumawa ng finishing ng mga products. For example, then, 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 price difference ng PPE made here and the one coming in from China? Reset, can you answer that? It's actually... Uh, we're very competitive, uh, Madam Senator. We're very competitive uh, for the pricing. In fact, in the results of the bids, uh, we're very close. But then uh, we couldn't really compete when they start really diving the prices below industry rates. So that uh, allowance before, if you recall, in under Bayanihan 2, uh, there was a proposed preference for the totoo, yung medical grade, nasa 1.9, 1 peso 91 centavos until 1.99 pesos. Ang problema, yung mga winners, non-medical grade, 1.5. Di syempre mas mura yung 1 peso 50 centavos. Kaya lang non-medical, it's not naman apples to apples. Yeah, because of the standard, di ba? Ang layo naman ng level 1 to level 4, eh. Siguro, <laughs> I, uh, I guess may mga resolution na ata na filed about this, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, magandang tignan at uh, baka may cartel din na, uh, kumbaga, uh, who, who's trying to get all this contract para mas nahihirapan yung local market natin makapasok dito sa pagsusupply ng PPEs. Yes, Senator Bina, a very cursory uh, uh, review of the winning bids will show that uh, the same few companies uh, continue to win them um, every bidding round, unfortunately. And siguro, Madam Chair, kasi uh, I think sa mga news din uh, lately, parang maraming nanguhuli ang, I think, BOC, ng mga medical supplies. I am sure may, may, may portion dito na parang smuggled na yung local industry natin for PPEs nakikikompete din dun sa mga smuggled items. <laughs> Daming problema. Ayun lang muna pa, Madam Chairwoman. And uh, pala, one last na lang. Siguro from, from us, from, the, from Congress, how can we help the industry? Mom, we want the uh, uh, we um uh, the, the pandemic bill. Pandemic bill. Pandemic Para bill. Uh, required na yung local manufacturer to retain jobs and to secure and stockpile. Okay. That Thank you, Madam us. Chair. Sorry, na unahan kita marite. <laughs> Madam <don't> Chair. <laughs> Kasi na inis na mo Senator Gatchalian, meto nung po kayo. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. But mine has uh, partly been answered by Marites, but nevertheless, I'll ask Naren on a separate topic, Marites, from your group of uh, manufacturers. How many po ang na-retrench from the onset of um, the pandemic? You mentioned earlier 25,000. Is that correct? Yes, 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 Senator. Uh, we did a survey as early as April, May of 2020, and, uh, and our survey showed, and it was proven when we checked it, that we will be retrenching at that time 25,400 workers until December of 2020. It happened. It did happen that we retrenched 25,400 something workers from the period of June to December of 2020. And that's coming from our group alone. We're about 120,000 workers, conwet lang po, garments and shoes and bags, out of 280. So, yung 25 po natanggal from the 120 no group po namin. We're ba barely 100 now. But what, what is the reason for the retrenchment? What is the primary reason? Is it because of no orders, low orders? He, um, as, as, as when it happened last uh, April, uh, there were no orders uh, or 
uh, uh, by the time April, May, June, we were seeing 50% cut. Uh, it was so bad that, uh, when, remember, sir, when when no n- n- lockdown, um, I think March, April, May, uh, when we had the lockdown, um, we lost a very, very big opportunity at that time. Na unahan kami ng Myanmar at that time, bu- ano pa sila, uh, ng Vietnam and ng Cambodia. Because when we had the lockdown from March to May, the buyers saw the opportunity to cancel it. Sabi, and even if with, uh, the materials were in our warehouses, March, April, they said, do not touch, do not cut, canceled. We will use it for next year. Kaya na wala po kami ng order. Kasi napunta sa iba. And then, it's 25,000. Are these regular workers or contractual yes. workers? Sir, regular po. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, ASEC Tutai would uh, know that we are very uh, consistent convict members. Basically, we hire the regular workers. Basically, po nag retrench kami, nagbayad kami. We paid what was due. Yeah, retrench regular workers. And lastly, the 25,000, uh, did they receive any assistance from the government, whether financial or otherwise? Uh, that's uh that that um that's that's that twenty five thousand when we retrench them we follow the dollar rule okay uh we we have to give the separation pay accordingly now uh open ended when they were being retrenched i think the ayudas or the subsidies that the sss the um the camp was already given out so but uh, it depends on the time they were they they were moved out because we were returned so uh, i think they did naman some of them went for the sss uh so i think regular, they did regular. they are regular they're supposed to get the sss let's say uh, yes. that's a benefit intended yes. by being a member yes sir i think they did get the sss okay thank you thank you uh ma'am. thank you madam chair Yes, uh, Risa. Yes, I am uh, thinking. Uh, just uh, by way of warning, meron tayong uh, uh, tatlo pang mga manufacturing and other industries that are represented here. Uh, apat pala. Meron pa food, mes- medical. Maybe you'd like to go there. Tapos metal ko pa tayo at may cement. So marami-rami pa tayo. Anyway, Senator uh, Risa, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a brief manifestation at this point in time. For the record, speaking of the resolutions mentioned by uh, Sen. Nancy and bills, uh, Senate Bill 1796 on Pandemic Readiness and Protection Act, uh, I filed in August uh, 2020, and it's pending in the Committee of Health on Health. So I join with the uh, Chair, the Madam Chair, and the other colleagues here in hoping that uh, it can be heard uh, if uh, re-referred uh, to the Committee of Chair Sen uh, Coco. And uh, Senate Resolution 506 uh, on the PPE Bayanihan Project was filed also in August of 2020 and also is pending in the Committee on Health. And I'm glad that uh, Madam Chair brought it up in this hearing as well because uh, that uh, particular resolution uh, seeks to inquire into uh, the procurement service of DBM and also into the Department of Health because apparently it was PSDBM which um, entered into those contracts and the DOH uh, allowed those and did not object to those for the record. And thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as, uh, Madam the Chair. Yes, uh, Committee Ma- Secretary, Chair? just very quickly. Uh, meron bang tayong DBM dito? Parang uh, meron yata, ASEC Toledo. Baka may gustong uh, i-comment or uh, baka hinga natin ng papeles tungkol dito para makatulong kay Senator Coco pag inimbestigahan niya. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, yes, uh, yes, we heard the uh, no, uh, comments at the same time. Uh, the concern of our uh, PPE manufacturers. Yes, I think, Madam Chair, I think that was... Uh, when I. By the way, I called our uh, PS uh, director, who is in charge, of course, of this procurement as for our uh, COVID-19 response at the same time, specifically for the PPE. And, Madam Chair, I was informed that uh, given, I think, the urgency of those uh, procurement, 
we need to really uh, uh, already have that to be bid it. And I, I think the, the problem there is the timing when in the local manufacturers are probably, I don't know if, uh, well, yes. I understand they were also considered the BD. Yes, but, you're right, Asa. The uh, unmentioned part was that there was also a stipulation in the bid documents that uh, yeah. I believe X percent had to be this had to be delivered within one month. Clearly yeah. undoable if you are going to manufacture it, manufacture yeah. them. So one million pieces were to be delivered in fifteen days. Pala, male, hindi pa one month, fifteen days. Bukam may nag stockpile na una na. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, all our procurement, naman, Madam Chair, is on uh, no, uh, public bidding. And I understand they have participated. But I guess following the procurement law, I think they have uh, all the requirements also. I think uh, this time it was already awarded to, of course, your mati mga imported uh, PPEs. But they can always naman participate, Madam Chair, given this a public bidding naman. Yes, yeah, at tuloy-tuloy naman ang procurement para yes, sa Yes, Madam Chair, marami pa naman tayong pangailangan. At tuloy-tuloy pa rin naman yung ating uh, pag-procure. And also... Uh, Siguro what uh, you can give us, ASEC, uh, are uh, these requirements, like the delivery within 15 days, which uh, seems really uh, rushed. And also the uh, alleged uh, inclusion of uh, USDA, US standards or its equivalent. And then the details also, kasi tinatanong ni Senator Nancy, sino-sino nga ba ang nananalong madalas? Uh, Madam Chair? Yeah. Madam Chair, oh, uh, siguro, just to add then, Madam Chair, um, kasi parang magiging chicken and egg yan eh. Yung mga, yung mga, manufacturer, yung mga manufacturers natin, Bakit naman sila magsa-stockpile ng 1 million kung alam naman din nila na hindi sa kanila mapupunta yung, yung kontrata, di ba? Ah, kung baga, lugi na nga sila, lalo pa silang malulugi. But kung ang requirement naman ng DBM, kailangan meron kang 1 million na ready mo isupply in 15 days na alam naman natin na may hihirapan yung local manufacturers natin to comply with that requirement. So it's either we, we change the term to para to make it convenient or may fighting chance naman yung mga local manufacturers natin. Yun lang po, Madam Chairwoman. Amen. Thank you, po. Thank you very much. Uh, someone seems to have raised their hand. Yes. Uh, Madam Senator, Chair. Please. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. You, and I add my amen of the chair to what Sen Nancy has said. Uh, and of course, we will... Uh, flesh this all out in gory detail, hopefully in the hearing in the uh, Tsen Kokos uh, committee, uh, including the points raised by you, Sek Toledo, about timing and about compliance with the procurement law. Because I think that CPMP will be well able to prove in that hearing that uh, they could have made the timing aspect and that they they were um, willing or they already did comply uh, with the procurement law. And lastly, um, it just, I'm sorry to say, it just smacks of unfairness or bad faith to have asked them to repurpose, to serve our pandemic response needs and then to not order whatever stock they already <laughs> had produced and had stockpiled. At least begin sila ng first option. That's just the mi bare minimum of the fighting chance that uh, Sen Nancy said, and I agree with. We should have given our Filipino manufacturers inubligan na nga natin, bakit hindi natin inorderan. Salamat, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you very much. And Senator Gachelian, please. Hey, uh, Madam Chair, I was just testing the unraising uh, picture. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Okay. Madam Chair. Madam yes. Chair, last na lang before we move to the other uh, groups. Hindi, gusto ko lang ito, no? Kasi I think yung nagiging isang advantage ng Vietnam sa atin is parang um, they've learned how to survive with the virus, di ba? Uh, mababa yung vaccination rate nila, uh, Pero nakokontrol nila yung spread ng, ng COVID. Um, I'm, I just want to ask yung sa garment industry, pati na rin din sa semiconductors, have you introduced reforms dun sa mga factories nyo um, to, para make it, uh, to make it 
COVID safe or uh, may, may mga gano'n na ba kayong uh, protocols in place para kung magkaroon man ng positive na na-arrest ka agad yung spread? Earlier, uh, Dan La Chica of SAPI mentioned that they had already uh, uh, put partitions in their shuttle buses and in fact, it was costing them 10 million pesos a month for shuttling employees. Ah, Dan, pa ba si Dan? Arian pala eh. Oh, Dan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm here. Yes, uh, we've done that. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, our infection rate was less than 1%. And it's not coming from the factory. Uh, we provide uh, vitamins, uh, thermometers individually, and then practice social distancing, and even uh, QR code-based contact tracing. So we've done that uh, if I may, just a quick comment uh, for our friends here, uh, Marites and Rosette. If you intend to export or supply locally, uh, our electronics industry, as you know, uses a lot of uh, PPEs and smocks. We're willing to work with you to explore that possibility of supplying to our industry. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Dan. I'll sell to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. No, 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 uh, clearly, they're at the forefront of this, and uh, they're represented by Miss Helen Grace Baisa. Is that correct? Are you still around? Yes, or ma'am. Hi, good morning, Honorable Chair. Yes, umaga pa rin. Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, good, mo good morning, Honorable Chair, uh, Senator Marcos, Honorable Senator Schimentel. Senator Hontiveros, Senator Gachalian, and Senator Binay. Um, on behalf of the Philippine Chamber of Food Manufacturers, I would like to thank the Economic Affairs and Trade, Commerce and Entrepreneurship Committees for giving us the opportunity to participate in this meeting. Our chamber understands the support and general objectives of this um, dialogue. Food products well are in our arguably essential. Our industry, however, since last year, have been affected as well by the pandemic and um, following the measures implemented due to the crisis. So businesses resorted to towards digitalization and automation, but at the same time, po, um, uh, restricting our member companies to operate on its full capacity. So um, these results are, are resulting to lesser demand and supply in um, raw materials, packaging materials, affecting also the businesses um, from these categories and resulting as well to uh, lesser uh, outputs of finished products. So the food and beverages, I can say, recovering from all these disruptions, trying to continuously cope up with these disruptions. What is quite bothersome, though, are the series of proposed legislations affecting the food and beverage industry. Okay, um, yes, I was going to ask about that kasi marami kang daing katulad ng uh, medical sector na ang dami-daming cheap medicine efforts na nakakasira rin sa kanila. Okay, so. So, um, yeah, as for probably the level of support, firstly, and I'm certain everyone agrees, uh, we do hope to expedite um, vaccination. Second, um, allow our industry to fully recover before coming up with a series of new legislations um, affecting our operations, most especially bills, new taxes. Uh, uh, our industry have been... Hindi malamig. Alin yung new taxes that you are uh, specifically referring to? So, um, actually, uh, yeah, first is the um, sweet and beverage. Before, po, right now, we're, um, yeah, we are, uh, we, 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 we have this, um, uh, single use plastics, so medyo, um, so, uh, but plastics. the sugar, the sugar beverage just tapos na yung tax dyan, may bago pa ba? Tapos na po, pero we, we are, um, hearing some things na baka it will be, you know, um, expanded. So I'm not so sure, pero right yes, now, yes, we are trying to be ready. Yes po. Pero we're hoping hindi pa po. Pero um, currently oh, oh. nga po, yung sa, sa single-use plastics, medyo uh, tapos na po yung sa lower house, sa Congress, tapos, and I think um, nasa 
nasa uh, records committee na po. Anyway, Ang alam um, ko naman, di ba, may, kuanyan, may transition period, hindi naman overnight maglilipat sa, sa non-single use. Yes po, yeah. and we, yeah, we requested, and also we requested for um some, parang... What uh, period did you ask for, for the single use? I'm more familiar with the LGU, pinasa namin sa Ilocos, yan kaagad-agad eh. Yeah, so, uh, so na to we are not... Anong, really, anong period ang hinihingi? Um, One, iba, iba, three iba, years, yun ba yun? Iba-iba po eh, pero meron pong two years. Yeah, anong gusto ninyo? Ah, okay. Exclusion of the, yung sa mga sachets po. Kasi um, we're talking about food safety eh. Um, it really involves yung um, sa aluminum sachets po. Kasi this is the result of the series and um, of uh, product developmental work. And um, so, the payag reason... Kayo, payag kayo na iban yung mga plastic sachets, pwera lang yung aluminum sachets, which are somehow recyclable. Recyclable po at the same time kasi um, we're to, ang, ang, ang issue po kasi namin is um, you know one uh, one of the most important factors pagdating sa food safety is yung packaging materials. So yung packaging materials so um based on our uh, decades of uh, um, product development ito po yung uh, you know it it helps preserve yung finished products specifically yung powder products and specifically products that are highly hygroscopic. So hygroscopicity or the higher the water activity of the powder products, the higher or the more prone these products are to uh, microbiological contamination. So medyo doon po yung inaan namin food safety. Oh, so if you can... Me, forgive me for ignorance. The constitution of your group, karamihan ba MSMEs or malalaki? <laughs> Uh, actually, we have currently 107 um, member companies, mostly belonging to the to um to the large companies. We also have a medium com um scale companies. However, we also mentor po yung mga MSME na who are also into the food and beverage industry. So we have what we call in the um this um MSME committee. We uh, we call them uh we call them uh small brothers. So, parang in the industry. So, what we do is we mentor them. We provide, or we uh, we, we we provide, uh, or we give um trainings, free trainings, uh, when it comes to uh, food safety, uh, operations, uh, certificate of product registrations, ng material. Yes, you, you mentioned the uh, you mentioned na included naman kayo sa essential, di ba? So, walang problema sa A4. Hindi katulad ng exporter natin. Uh, Nag-digitalize kayo, sabi ninyo. Is that in terms of e-commerce or just automating your uh, uh, work process? Yung work process and um, mostly because we cannot go physically or not all of us can go physically at the same time sa mga planta po namin, nag-digitalize po kami. So we also, ah. yes. At saka may level of retrofitting din, di ba? Kasi nga mag-physical distancing, katulad nga ng SAPI. Ah. Pero uh, sa ibang bansa kasi, tinutulungan, tinutulungan yung mga nag-automate at nag-digitalize. Tayo hindi pa natin tinutulungan. Sariling sikap pa rin kayo. Pero at least exactly. kayo ang naman malalaking kumpanya. Pero Madam Chair, um, yes, uh, you know, yung mga large companies po, ang mga large companies, you know, we can afford to house our, or some of our um, employees. You know, pero tsaka to transport them, however, yung mga MSMEs po talaga, medyo doon po sila nahihirapan. So, ang dami na rin pong MSMEs probably na, you know, um, they've been um, significantly affected. So, medyo yung iba na rin, nagsasara na rin. So, yun nga sana, if we can, uh, yeah, look at this, um, you know, um, the, you know, focus on this um, MSMEs uh, committee as well. So yon. I think in the food sector, uh, there's been also a failure to access the DTI loans mentioned earlier. Yung small business corporation. Hindi naman banko yon, pero hindi naman nangungutang ang um, ating tourism, food, and other uh, hard hit sectors. Yes, po. Siguro po ano. Um, I think uh, DTI is also doing their best and performing well in this area. However, kulang lang po siguro sa information dissemination and um, uh, yung mga MSMEs. Hindi, hindi. Talagang alam nila pero ayaw, ayaw na mangutang eh dito sa amin. 
uh, yung mga tourism, yung maliliit na food manufacturers, ayaw uh -huh. ng, uh, ayaw ng uh, mangutang kasi no prospects naman daw of opening soon. So why will they expand? I think Senator Coco um, has asked to go ahead. That's uh, fine. We have some more meetings. Um, thank you very much. Miss Baisa, carry on. Sorry. Ah okay so um where was I okay anyway so yun po um uh yung uh So you were saying that the MSMEs are the ones who really need help pero kayong yes. malalaki kahit papaano nakaka-survive tama ba Tapos five po kami uh but then at the same time we also um parang appeal to the legislators na pwede po you know we're still recovering pa rin kahit papaano uh, kaya medyo hinay-hinay lang po pagdating sa legislations eh ang hirap po ang hirap po makako and uh, uh, yung industry naman, uh, we are compliant with the food regulations and we encourage our members to comply with all these regulations or yes, but it seems like you're always the favorite target of the legislator. Sorry to say this. Uh, plus, please don't get me wrong. There are a lot of good um, legislations meant to improve the industry. One example is the Senate Bill 19. 16 and 1954 yata, for the Transfat Free Philippines authored by Senators Binay and Senators Pangilinan, which we support, of course, with comments and recommendation. This is a very good bill, um, following, of course, yung, yung mga evidences na pagdating sa health. Uh, number four, siguro, another support that, uh, that our industry need at the moment is for the government to further capacitate the FDA. Provide additional staff, um, provide additional or improve their laboratories or number of um, laboratories, among others. And it would be most helpful if additional budget can be allocated for the um, mentioned purposes, which will improve eventually as well the services of the industry, not just the food, but the pharma, cosmetics, and household industry. Po. So, yun po, sana hingi din po na FDA yan. Medyo matagal tagal na. Kulang na kulang daw po sila sa budget. And, uh, yeah. Lahat na gagalit sa kanila, kaya walang may gusto magbigay ng budget. Nabukulisya. <laughs> Uh, Actually, but, Madam Chair. Yes, yes, Senator. Gusto Nancy. ko lang malaman kasi yung reklamo sa FDA, matagal na yan eh. Uh, at the moment, Actually, anong, anong record ngayon ng FDA pagdating dun sa pag-release sila ng mga permits? Uh, Madam uh, Chair, uh, Senator Binay, thank you for that question. In fact, the food and beverage industry, happy po kami ngayon sa performance ng FDA. Very happy po kami. Um, uh, you know, my, my citizens charter sila. Compliant naman sila sa EODB. So, uh, happy po kami. Ha? Hindi siguro lahat, pero most of the our member companies, since pag-compliant po kasi kayo, mabilis na lang eh. So, yon. So happy po talaga kami. At least good news. At least good okay, news. Kasi sure, dati, di ba? Naman sa kakakulit natin, Senator Gatchal yan. Yeah. May epekto pala. Yeah. Uh, Senator Sherwin? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm just listening to uh, Ms. Baisa. Uh, and uh, you asked her, what can the legislature do to help her sector? But she said, uh, part of the help, I think she enumerated, Three, number two was not to enact any new legislation. So in other words, uh, sabi niya, tulungan niyo kami, pero wag niyo nalang gawin yung trabaho niyo. So I'm, I trying, know. To I'm trying to reconcile how, how, do we, how, do we do, how do we help them by not doing our job. So I mean, it's not I think... Hindi no, naman, to be fair, I think she was only referring to two specific areas, additional sugar uh, drinks, <laughs> sugar beverages, additional taxes there, and uh, immediate imposition of single-use uh, plastics. Dalawa lang naman ang kinatatakutan nila. Yung iba, okay naman sa kanila yung kainan, sina, trans fat. Yes po. No, Senator Wim Gachalian, sorry po, but no, um, of course, you know, um, we are... Uh, we we uh, understand you mga bills that you are trying to impose. But as what um Senator um Marcus has mentioned er, as mentioned, yung mga po yung mga imposing yung mga new taxes po, medyo mahirap po for now to impose. So uh let us recover first and medyo bigyan yung po ng chance specifically yung mga uh, MSME yung small brothers natin kasi sila po talaga yung most affected industry. So and uh 
we also may we also request the legislators to be yun na considered yung mga industry na to when crafting new bills ayan and lastly involving us po or various industries like here in crafting legislation is really an admirable move so thank you so much po yun lang <laughs> so, <laughs> madam chair <laughs> Yes, Senator Risa. Okay na, is she forgiven, Senator Wynn? Senator Wynn. Relax ka lang, parang yung hinahabod ng dating. Hyper po talaga ako, Senator Wynn. I'm sorry. Too many sugar beverages. I'm really sorry, but I love sugar. I actually grew up in a sugar industry, pero... Very, <laughs> ayaw ko naman, no, 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 very, ano din po ako, uh, you know, I, I watch also, you know, yung food. Tapos, ang um, actually, my my personal business is um more on the health, ano eh, mga innovative, uh, mga natural and, uh, you know, products for health benefits. So, if ever na ma magkaroon ng iposesyon yung mga, yung mga, mga unhealthy na tinatawag nyo po, eh, ako yung dapat yung makikinabang. Pero no, I have to speak on behalf of the industry kasi affected din po lahat-lahat. So we don't want that to happen. I, affected po sila. Affected po yung entire economy. Senator Risa, I think yes, you're right. Yes, thank you, Madam it. Chair. Opo, salamat, Madam Chair. Dahil binanggit din ni Ms. Baisa na bagamat malaking kumpanya, mga kumpanya sila, they have some medium, but nagme-mentor sabi nila, nagme-mentor sila ng small firm. So, if uh, Ms. Baisa would know and could comment, what about the small firms? No, What has been the recourse of distressed smaller firms that couldn't afford the costly proceedings described in the FRIA Act, yung Financial Rehabilitation and Insolvency Act of uh, 2010? And kung nandito rin at gustong mag-comment, Madam Chair, yung DOJ, has the Department of Justice ramped up Ramp its alternative DOJ, dispute sorry. resolution? Ah, wala po, Madam Chair. Oh, sige po. So I'll just reserve that for another hearing. So Ms. Baisa, uh, ano po yung nalalaman po ninyo tungkol sa kapalaran ng mga uh, small firms ngayon na distressed pero hindi afford yung proceedings sa ilalim ng FRIA Act? Well, actually, uh, Madam Chair, um, uh, Senator Hantivirus, thank you for that question. I'm really mm -hmm. not um, currently in the position to answer that because um, okay. we have our MSME um, um, members. We have okay. to uh, gather information from them, but I think um, okay. they're really having issues. And if you know the government can help and can assist them, and uh, you know concentrate on them because this distress. Uh, um uh sector that you've mentioned yeah mm. adi needs thank them. you salamat miss baisa madam chair baka dti maka comment yes. kung dito sila yes and i'd also I, i'd also like to invite since we're in the subject of food eh nandito rin hindi naman sila manufacturer nasa service sector sa food caterers uh mm. kung buhay pa kayo given na wala na nga uh, events at uh, binansagan ng mga super spreader Kung buhay pa yung ating Philippine Association of Stores and Caritaria, kasi nga napakahirap ng uh, sitwasyon ngayon. So please vote in or uh, if you would like, submit the uh, position papers as well. So yung DTI lang po. DTI, ang narito ay Director Sandy Recolizado. Nandiyan pa ba? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. For the DTI, under the Board of Investments, uh, what we did was to issue policies because what we can work on is within our mandates only under EO 226 and now uh, uh, revised by CREATE. Uh, so what we have issued last year are policies to address yun or to help um hard hit industries even by the Taal Volcano. So mm -hmm. we issued policies for the deferment of the enjoyment of the income tax holiday so that companies that are registered with the BOI can maximize or optimize their, their incentives availment because if they mm -hmm. will avail or if we did not defer their ITH, uh, if they will not... Again this year... 
Ano po? Are you going to do that again this year or last year lang? Ah, uh, yun policy po is until revoke po namin niya. So continuing po yun COVID. So it's still uh, implemented. So Ma, also the for small firms or sa malalaki lang. We register even the micro and small. So the micro and small can uh, avail of that. So for BOI register firms po ito para po yun uh, kasi po kung sa filing ngayon ng ITH diba, ng income tax uh, return nila sa BIR pag uh, nag-avail po sila ng ITH for this year wala po silang ma-enjoy ma dahil karamihan sa kanila losses. So mm -hmm. walang effect yun income tax holiday nila. So that's why we issued the policy for them to be able to the further availment of that incentive. So kung kailan sila pwede nang, meron na silang kita na pwede nilang ma-exempt for taxation. So isang help po yan. And then in response po sa call for assistance ni Secretary, Secretary Tourism, si Secretary Puyat, uh, we crafted together with DOT uh, policy enabling the uh, incentivization of the uh, COVID-19, uh, COVID proofing ng mga facilities, ng mga tourism accommodations and tourist transport. So yung po yung aming mga assistance na binigay. And then considering now we, we saw that this is helpful to the industries, we expanded this to all to all industries that will COVID-proof their facilities. So whether manufacturing or service-oriented, if, if you will COVID-proof your facilities, yung cost ng COVID-proofing nyo, we consider this as, that as additional investment. And as additional investment, yeah, we, we, we consider that as rehabilitation or modernization. So you are entitled to additional three years income tax holiday. Business corporation largely untouched pa rin yung pautang. I was going to ask Neda in as much as uh, we have uh, Yusek uh, Rose here. And I think uh, the DOF is also present. Um, Meron po ato tayo, Madam Senator, na taga BISMED dito on the, S, uh, S, yun sa loans po ng DTI, who can answer that? Si Ms. Susan Salonga po. Ayun pala, yeah. And uh, I think uh, there are other representatives here from DOF. Um, hearing all of this, um, should we consider realigning all the uh, loans that were granted under uh, Bayanir 2, for example, and shift them to wage subsidies and outright uh, assistance for retrofitting, retooling, and so on? Um, maybe somebody from uh, the business, uh, what did you say? The business, sorry. I missed the name kasi. Um, DTI, may sinasabi po kayo uh, na may alam sa loans kasi nga hindi, uh, hindi pinapatulan yung loans eh. Yes, Madam Senator. Actually po, this is from the BISMED and the implementer of the uh, loan SBC. programs is the, uh -huh. yes, the SBC po. Under uh -huh. the SBC, ma'am, the CURES program has been implemented po for three for three types na po of beneficiaries na po. The first one is for the general, the micro enterprises, small business, and the medium enterprises. The next one po is the tourism, rehabilitation, and vitalization of enterprises. These are for the beneficiaries of the tourism industry, or in tourism enterprises, and beneficiaries of the tourism sector can avail of such loans. And also, there is uh, helping the economy recover through OFW enterprise startups, which is the Heroes program, also under the CARES program, wherein a uh, 100 million facility for repatriated OFWs.
due to the COVID, can avail of loan facility. And uh, these are all under the Bayanihan Act. And uh, your question, Madam, on the if we can consolidate all these loans, ma'am? No, that wasn't the question. The question is, why do we have such a uh, poor uh, borrowing rate? I mean, uh, almost 70% remains intact. Oh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Actually, um, we have been, uh, the SB already has a digitalized application forms for the for the for the availment of this loan. However, we indeed have low turnout of these loans because uh, apparently yes, it is director, uh, director, I'm aware even here in the far reaches of northern Luzon, naririnig ko yung inyong marketing at talagang uh, kinukumpuni ninyo yung mga tao, ayaw lang talagang mangutang. Kaya nga iniisip ko kung nandyan yung NED at yung DOF, hindi ba mas maigi ibigay na lang bilang subsidy as a uh, uh, wage subsidy to retain jobs and uh, ibigay na lamang sa um, ating uh, nagre-retrofit, yung nangunguna na mag-digitalize lahat yun, imbes na yung loan na ayaw talagang uh, kunin? Totoo po yan, ma'am. Actually, the, the problem is the low business confidence po. Totoo po yung, I heard you mention earlier that uh, some of them do not want to take loans because of the negative outlook of businesses. Yeah. So if that is the proposal, ma'am, we, we will oblige for if uh, it will be provided a subsidy to the enterprises. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone want to uh, to uh, say something from uh, speaking of MSMEs? Kumusta na yung stores and calendaria owners? Si Miss Constantino yung ating presidente. May position po kayo? yung sa karinderya natin sa kayong mga small businesses yes mama okay hindi natin marinig masyado si Miss Constantino nariyan rin naman yung food caterers baka okay. meron kayong yes po tindang haro ah mahina yung signal yata nakaka problema kami sa audio ninyo uh, habang inaayos, pwede natin uh, tawagan yung caterer. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Honorable Senator Amy Marcos, and to all our Honorable Senators and Committee members. So before we begin our presentation, no, we'd like to show you a short video of what the Food Caterers Association is. So Mabilis Mabilis na mabilis lang po. And we have prepared for this. So actually, um, the Food Caterers Association of the Philippines was uh, formed in 2001. It was started by a group of caterers. And who felt the need to industrialize and to professionalize our sector by forming an organization. So actually, po ang FCAP is not just composed of food caterers, but allied members as well, coming from the different sectors of food, raw materials, events, services, and venues, even kitchen equipments and transportation alike. So um, since then, since 2001, we have multiplied its membership and allied members. So bringing various um, activities such as caterers conference from Manila to Cavite, even as far as Ilocos Norte. So yan po yung ibang mga pictures namin. So maybe I can ask the, the video to be cut short so we can also present our position. Yes, essentially, essentially, this is a consultation, and the senators would like to know uh, from the uh, part of the legislature how we can help you, given that uh, these uh, events are no longer allowed. Allowed, and, yes. Uh, you had to convert your venues as well Correct. as uh, going online with mm -hmm. uh, affiliations with food delivery services. Exactly. So, ano magagawa natin para matulungan kayo kasi nagbago nga yung uh, sistema at yung uh, habit okay. ng mga tao? May I just request uh, slide 9 to be shown? Um, we'd like to em to give emphasis muna, ma'am, sana, on our industry. Kasi lalo na sa catering industry, 
medyo yeah. kami yung hindi na papansin unlike restaurants and hotels. So in right. fact, the food service industry has grown so much that in 2018, 67.5% po ang dinami namin dito sa industriya nito. Also, we're around um, employing alone in 2018, 558,000 workers. So as well as, we're also giving them the biggest compensation. Um, likewise, 558,000 ang sektor ninyo? Ang trabaho doon? Opo, 2018 lang yun, ma'am. And of course, it's steadily growing up until, of course, the onset of the pandemic. So during uh, these... Are so catering ka, ah, hindi ito restaurant o hotel? Um, actually, ma'am, it's an intertwined. Some of Ay, us are into eh. catering only. Others okay. have venues and accommodation because our industry is very dynamic. Iba-iba, oh. pero talagang lahat ng, ng sektor na natatouch po namin. So, fast forward in 2020 with the onset of the pandemic, yung aming growth na maganda na sana, of course, came into a complete halt. So, talagang naging opposite po lahat ng nangyari. So, be, although being an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs, yung resiliency, andun pa rin naman po. Pero sa totoo lang, ma'am, with the initial lockdown, around, I think it was around 40 to 50 percent of our colleagues chose to temporarily or completely shut down. Yung iba naman po chose to operate on a skeletal basis, maybe just doing around 20 percent of how they used to before, just to keep our businesses afloat. At para hindi din po kami makalimutan ng aming mga kliyente. Madami naman kasing opportunity like um, food deliveries. But then again, ma'am, um, it is not enough. It is not enough to cover and to compensate, maintain all our employees. It is not enough to cover the overhead costs. And syempre, because you'd like to continually open our businesses, ang pinakamabigat po sa amin at present is the current um, government mandates na para kaming open-close, open-close na industriya. So uh, the latter part of 2020 and during the earlier part of 2021. Can you put a number to how much does uh, food delivery uh, cover? Um, as of now, ma'am, food deliveries, I don't have the figures for that. Diba kasi konti lang yun kung ihahambing sa catering ng uh, daan-daan tao eh. So I was just wondering, it's very small, di ba? Although it's very visible yes. and we keep talking about it. The reality is it's so small. It is so small that we're, if we are used to catering thousands, we're not... We're just now like down to what three p three packs five percent. I will ask you. I will ask you. I I will ask you for purposes of macro and uh, other economic analysis to give me some kind of numbers, ah, because okay. tulong sa akin. You don't have to do it now. Uh, perhaps you can talk yeah. to your members to give us some idea of the quantum that's been lost. Lost. Yes. That. Uh, thank you for that. Po. So going back. Um, the accommodation and food service business has been the bread of butter of not just us, but of more so our employees. Karamihan po sa mga empleyado namin are not just professionals, but these are the people who hardly even graduated high school. And these are the employees who depend so much on us na ang sweldo nila kada araw is actually good enough for two to three days of their family's need. So biruin nyo, ang makansalan lang po kami ng isang event would have a great impact on one waiter, on one cook, on one, uh, on one uh, janitor. So ganun po, on a micro level, on our level, that is our reality. So with this, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity for giving us no, the chance to air what we are requesting from our government. So may I have the slides, please, of our... There's just seven, though. And this is just a very brief. So number one, we are requesting for a financial assistance. So this is highly welcome. But we would appreciate if there would be a clear uh, protocol or yung procedure on how we can go about this, especially when... Although we are encouraging... What do you mean by that? Nagugula na, kayo sa patay sinde, open, close? Or exactly. nagkutulong kayo sa actual protocols kung may shield at may face mask sa loob ng bahay. Alin ang uh, uh, tinutupoy po ninyo dyan? 
actually ma'am walang problema sa protocols because i think those are standard where face so what do you not, what do you mean by a clear um, perspective uh, a clearer mandate maybe on the rules and the regulation tama po yung sinabi niyo na open close open close kami doon kami nalilito and another thing is iba minsan ang policy coming from IATF iba from DOH and iba when we go down to the level of the LGU which sometimes is iba ang pamamalakad or policy ng LGU of for example Marikina as compared to Quezon City oh, just making a, making a very clear uh, ex, uh, example uh, marami dito sa Ilocos Norte at sa Baguio yung mga tourist spot ng Northern Luzon na nag uh, bumili ng katakot-takot na pagkain na storage para sa Holy Week kasi ina-assume nga nila na the crowds from NCR would be forthcoming. Of course, nagkaroon ng ECQ virtually overnight, ano, walang paghanda. So they got stuck with so much food that, that they could barely uh, afford to buy in the first place. Is that what you're referring to, that sort of thing? Na wag naman biglaan at iliwanag naman, gano'n. Yes, ma'am, that is uh, a percentage of it. Kasi parang walang paghahanda. Tuwawa talaga yung mga nag invest Because we do not know when to push forward. And we, because there's always the threat of making us stop in our operation. Nag-step one na kami pa ng forward. Pero pag sinabi ng government na we will change again, bawal ulit ng events, kahit maliliit na event, it's again a two-step backward naman sa amin. So parang mas That's naghihirapan right. kaming uh, mag-cope. Hirap na po kami, mas naghihingalo ngayon ng aming industriya. Then go with the chair. Yung, yung IATF at saka yung DOH at yung LGU, sabi mo magulo rin? Kasi nag-iiba pa yung uh, regulation. Yes, ma'am. And our service crosses borders, syempre, not just Rizal, also within Metro Manila. But sometimes nagiging palaisipan sa amin, What's the what's the policy in this particular right. area? Diba? It yeah. is so confusing. It's just what we're asking for. It's a unified, coordinated, across all areas of clear policy so that we as business owners... Yes, mas malaking problema ngayon, pa nga yan sa transportation sector. Eh, kasi yan ang kaki nilang daing. Hinong-hino na sila. May LTFRB, may LTO, may IATF, sang katutak na LGU, And uh, I think they're encountering even more severe pro problems in that regard than you are. But uh, you're suffering the same thing. Thank you for acknowledging that, ma'am. So going back to the loans, we're encouraging our members to take part or to, to avail of that. But then again, the big question is, how can we avail of this loan when in the first place we do not know what's the future of our industry? Uutang kami, pero andyan yung after a month, patitigilan kami ng operation. Baka mas makadagdag pa ang pag-avail ng loan sa iintindihin namin kung paano babayaran kung hindi kami makakapagnegosyo. So next slide please. Another is, yan, uh, to provide for a business tax holiday or extended, extended period of tax due payments on our affected businesses. Also, to provide a financial assistance for the food caterers as a restart of capital or recovery program. And then also, ito na po yung na-mention natin kanina, to codify a uniform government guideline um, of businesses so that we can operate uh, ng mas smoothly, no? So, it's actually po minsan the interpretation of the policy depends or varies from one LGU to another. Yes. Jenny, if I may, can I just call on uh, the NEDA? Andiyan pa ba si na Manang Rose? Uh, si na Yusek, Gil... Are they still there, the NEDA group? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Uh, I think Yusek Cruz had to move to another meeting. Again. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yes. Uh, um, I was just going to ask because um, NEDA has uh, recommended time and again regulatory leniency, di ba? Itong mga, itong mga periods. Covered ba yung mga caterer? Parang parati kasi hotel lang ang naririnig ko at restaurant. I'm not sure if the caterers were covered. Uh, I know, but I never mentioned the caterers. Yeah. I don't know. So we'll, we'll, we'll check and coordinate with DTI. I write they're no different sure. from the other food providers. But I think my understanding, Madam Chair, is it's not the operation as such that's being limited here with respect to the caterers. I think what's affecting them 
it's really the the fact that we're not allowing uh, people to gather together no, to, to celebrate. Yes, I understand. But among the requests is the deferment of uh, loan payments, tax holidays, and extended periods. So that's the reason I was uh, asking Neda because kayo yung uh, very uh, adamant about uh, said measures in the past. Yeah, we'll, we'll check again. Sa Kasi di ba kayo ang uh, nag-recommend ng mga 12 months na grace period, uh, tapos yung mga extended BIR and uh, other payments. So I was just curious if caterers were at some point explicitly or implicitly included. Thank, okay, thank yes, you for that. Yeah, thank you more. for that, Senator, because sabi ko nga po, it is our industry, our sector, na neither eh, kami yung nasa gitna, pero sa totoo lang, napal, napakalaki po namin. Um, although restaurants and hotels are being the highlights, we technically operate just the same. So, I, um, I understand number seven, meron sa uh, yes. secure upper IDs or A4? Yeah, yeah. So both but to be given also priority when it comes to the vaccine. I understand most of our employees would fall under the A4. Diba uh, A4 naman lahat ng food handlers? Yes po. Uh, so that's, ma masiguro it's more on the speeding up because the sooner that we can vaccinate our employees, the sooner that we can op open our industry. So also number seven is subsidies for the workers' salary operation and other um, expenses din po. So, with that... Hindi na panggit ko kanina, convert na lang yung isang katutak na loan na hindi din na-download. Exactly. At na lang wage subsidy, retrofitting subsidy, digitalization, e-cover subsidy. Pero ako yun. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Madam, Madam, Madam Chair. Ah, yes. Is Nancy there? Alam mo, hindi ko kayo nakikita. Yes. Pasensya. Okay, Senator Bina, please. Tatawin ko lang, Madam. I don't know... I don't know which government agency is in charge. Because I think, Madam Chairperson, um, we have we also have to accept the reality that may mga industry na hindi na talaga ma makakabukas or kumbaga sila yung huling huli na makakabukas. Because um, I mean, for example, de ba uh, sa events for as long as we have this, uh, hindi natin na address yung yung vaccination program natin yung yung um yung physical distancing and and the likes di ba so may mga may mga industry na hindi talaga makaka makakabangon muna and i think mukhang pasok dito ang catering unless unless we open up uh, mga venues na open air na kung saan magkakaroon ng uh, makaka-practice ng physical distancing but Meron pa rin, ano din yun, may, ano, kasi nililimit din yung, yung pwedeng mga guests, like, um, minsan 50 lang or 30, di ba? So, I don't know, yung, yung cost nun would be, uh, can, can make our caterers afloat, di ba? But, yun na nga, I think mm -hmm. ang name of the game right now is how to, and maging innovative, di ba? Uh, Yes. So, meron ba tayo government yes, agency? I, I, I agree with the Senator Nancy. We're not hearing from you the new normal for your sector. Puro ito, uh, uh, may assumption na parang may assumption na babalik sa dati. Eh, hindi na talaga babalik. Yun nga. And, and Madam Chairperson, um, kasi ito, yung mga industriya na ito, kumbaga uh, burdened na nga sila. And I think it's up to government to help them out kung ano ba yung 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 window kung saan sila pwedeng pumasok de ba ano yung yung potential shift na pwede nilang gawin and I don't know which government agency five hundred fifty eight thousand workers grave <laughs> de ba sino is Neda in charge or is it DTI yung kailangan uh, gumawa ng pag-aaral kung ano yung pwede nilang paglipatan na pwede silang hindi naman kailangan mag-boom ulit, pero yung kumbaga, just to keep everybody ah, afloat. Excuse me, diba, po? Makatawid. Meron ba government agency na ganun? Hello, po? Yes, sir. 
Yes, yes, we're clearly, we're clearly, even your upstream, your downstream, talagang magbabago na. Kasi di ba yung uh, pagka-transport lang ng uh, ingredients and food supplies, hirap na doon. Tapos yung mga events, hirap na ron. So, clearly, these are going to be smaller, more compact, more um, uh, stocking and stockpiling. And, of, uh, needs and send of I need, di ba, Naki, nakikita din natin na yung eating together is... Parang yan yung super spreaders, di ba? So, uh, yung konsepto na magkaroon ng wedding good for 500 guests, eh mukhang malabo at the moment, di ba? I don't see that happening this year. Maybe maybe next year, but this year mukhang, mukhang hindi na. So, kawawa itong mga caterers natin. Ano yung pwede nilang gawin? Ano yung pwede nilang pasukan? Uh, na sana yung, yung government agency can help them out, can teach them where, where they can go, di ba? Kasi kahit nga nandiyan yung facility for them to loan, eh bakit ka naman uutang kung alam mo na malulugi ka na to begin with? Yun lang po, Madam Chairperson. Ah, uh, hello po. Hello Who's po. that? Yes, uh, please identify yourself. Uh, from uh, PASCO, Philippine Association of Stores and Carinderia Owner, I'm Glo Haradal, uh, I'm the one to uh, talk regarding the PASCO. Yes, uh, yeah, if, si... you, if you don't mind, uh, uh, can, uh, antayin lang muna natin, ano, kasi okay, meta, no? uh, antayin lang yeah. po natin yung sagot, baka alam ng MEDA or uh, DTI. Uh, may, may dagdag lang po ako regarding dun sa pinag-uusapan ah, okay, okay. po natin. Yes, sige pa. Uh, yun po nga, no, yung catering, kasi kumbaga mayroon din po kaming catering kasi may karinderia din po ang Pasko. Tama. Uh, kumbaga nagsusupply din po kami niyan, kumbaga yung may mga order. Kaya lang nga po, uh, yun nga lang po, kumbaga mahirap din sa puna, lalo na yung malakihan ng mga umu-order. Eh ngayon po, regarding din po sa na, na, anuhan ko, yung pinag-uusapan pong loan, parang hindi po namin kayang mag-afford ng loan. Kaya hindi po ka maki-avail. And then, uh, kung kagaya po namin maliliit, mas priority po kasi ng DTI ang malalaking, uh, kumbaga mga store, like na yung may mga permit sila na galing na LGU. I like po namin na barangay permit lang kami. Parang medyo na less priority po kami. Gusto man po namin DTI. umutang. Sagutin gusto man po na, namin si umutang. Hindi po kami makakuha kasi kumbaga hindi ko po alam ko anong rason nila na kumbaga na less priority kami mga sari-sari store. Ayun uh, lang po at maraming salamat po Madam Chairman. Um it's actually Yes, DTI lang po, please. Madam Chair, may yeah. I be recognized? Uh, sino yung sorry, hapon... ako na naka-screen share, hindi wala akong makita. Sino ko sino ang sasalita? Uh, this is Abigail Zurita po of DTI. Ayun, okay, please, please uh, reply. Okay po. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity po. Uh, magandang hapon po, Madam Chair and uh, Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, I'd just like to uh, inform the body na meron pong National Employment Recovery Task Group and Task Group on Economic Recovery. Sila po, ay, ito po ay interagency uh, uh, working group na tinitingnan po ang uh, ating uh, uh, ating recovery ng economy sinong lead, as, sinong lead agency baka sa susunod na hearing pwede natin kumbidahin sino po ako, ang uh, DTI po is uh, chair of both uh, the task group the nurse task group and the teacher task group on economic recovery po DTI si Secretary Ramon Lopez po and I then uh, the Nurse Task Group is being co-chaired by uh, Dole and um, Tesda, while the teacher is uh, with uh, NEDA and other uh, uh, economic Sige, and... Uh, committee Secretary, siguro, Committee Secretary Beth Agas, sa susunod siguro, kung bidayin natin yan na mag-report at uh, bigyan tayo ng breakdown kung ano na nagawa nila. Hinggil sa tinatanong ni Senator Nancy. In the meantime, uh, Miss Surita, yung... Madam Chair, pwede tanong lang anong target date? Anong target date ng kanilang recovery plan ba yun? Ah, meron pong ano? Uh, Hello? Hello? Uh, yes, yes, Miss Surita. DTI, please. Yes, opo. 
Uh, so, meron po kaming short term. That is for the... Uh, uh, for the... Hindi, uh, okay lang. Kailan lalabas yung mga report ninyo para may makita kami ng liwanan? Actually, actually, actually po, yung nurse task... So, what's the number? Ito po yun. So, it's ilaw. Let me show you po. Ito po yung app. Ayan. So, meron siyang onboarding po dyan. Sorry, sorry. Please. Marami po kami naririnig na o, joke, sakit po kayo lang. Pakimute lang kung hindi kayo nagsasalita ngayon. Si Miss Surita lang po. Thank you. DTI, please proceed. Yung nurse uh, task force po, uh, they, we have a short term and uh, medium term and long term plans for the economic recovery. And... Um, Yung short term po for the administration of uh, President Duterte. Uh, actually po, nandito po ang aming uh, uh, head of the nurse task group, uh, Secretariat uh, Asek Niki. She is... Yeah, uh, she, uh, is she already spoke earlier. What we would like are, uh, do you have some plans or a report that you can share with us, even at this early juncture, so that uh, we can see that there are, in fact, uh, concrete uh, plans and programs in place for these different sectors? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may po, Nikki from Dole. Yes, Asik Tutay. Opo, uh, we already have... Mer meron po, Madam Chair, and we can send your office po. Actually, the eight-point employment recovery agenda of the Nurse Task Force will be presented during the Job Summit on May 1. Uh, okay. We have invited you po, Madam Chair, <laughs> during that summit. Uh, I, I, I hope you yeah, already uh, received the that's invitation. Right, that's right. Kasi katulad ni Senator Binay, tanong kami ng tanong eh. Opo. Meron naman po na konkreto na po yung mga plans and then this will be supported also by the business sector agenda and labor sector agenda uh, on employment recovery, Madam Chair. And yung pong mga pinag-usapan nyo po kanina, like for instance, yung, yung pong sa mga local manufacturers po natin na nag-report po, part of the plan po at talagang yun yung pinupush po namin nila sa Mon Lopez ay i-prioritize po ng government yung procurement ng local products just to preserve the, the, the employment of this uh, sector, Madam Chair. So, kasama po chair. doon sa yes, aming... I know you're Ms. Dole, but I think uh, Senator Binay's and my queries were specifically to do with uh, the displacement of workers and the displacement of entire industries that will probably never go back to the old bad normal. Uh, Madam Chair, siguro just to add, kasi I think government, yung government should also kumbaga, be realistic and be honest dun sa mga uh -oh. industry ya, na talaga hindi na makakabalik, makakabalik di ba? Na parang, I'm sorry kasi because of the COVID problem, yung industry yan yun, mukhang malabo na talaga makabalik. But, kung hindi kayo makabalik dun sa dating gawin, ito yung pwede nyong pasukan. Meron, may ganun bang pag-aaral na ginagawa? May ganun ba, Asik Tintay? Uh, Madam Chair, if... May sasagot ba sa DTI, NEDA, o yung iba pang mga government agencies na makakasagot? DTI? Siguro, just to add, Madam Chair, kasi ayaw din naman natin na bigyan sila ng false hope, di ba? Na... Yes, ah, hindi naman, alam naman natin na hindi na babalik sa dating gawe. So, kailangan mag-isip-isip tayo, sabay-sabay tayo. We have to put our heads together to create this new normal we keep talking about. Um, Madam Chair, can we just um, continue? Yes. Ay, sorry. Chair, we, were, we were wondering from the, We're just wondering from the government sector who's in charge. Uh, um, Madam, we appreciate very much all the inputs. Yes, um, is that uh, Dole? No, I think it's more rightly the, the NEDA and the DTI, you know, because we're aware of the efforts uh, regarding employment, but we're not aware of uh, the industrial transformation nga na sinatanong na ni Senator Binay. DTI ata, yan, yan, hindi kaya NEDA, wala bang sagot tayo? Madam Chair, Madam Chair, 
Karinderia. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, just to mention that in the updated PDP, that's one of the strategies that we are uh, have sorry, agreed upon. Talking? I'm sorry, who's talking? Uh, sorry, uh, Director Rape of NEDA. I'm sorry, sorry. It's, uh, it's you again. Thank you, NEDA. Yeah. So uh, I was mentioning that uh, that's actually one of the strategies that's uh, been included in the updated PDP that we help both our firms and our workers transition to the new normal. No? So that, uh, well, part of that would be helping them uh, look at other opportunities no, the, that they may have to consider uh, given the situation. Uh, of course, in terms of implementation, it's uh, the implementing agencies like DTI and DOLE who have specific programs that they're running to help the, the firms and the workers that do exactly that. No? So they're providing different trainings for livelihood, for reemployment, et cetera. While we are aware that it's a draft, uh, Director Ray, if you could give us the uh, said updated PDP or uh, other such uh, documents as may be related to the new uh, yes, transformation. Definitely. Sige, salamat. Thanks, Jenny. Um, Madam Chair. Very keen to ask something. Sorry. Yes. Uh, so, Madam Chair. From BOI. Uh, Senator Risa oh, Yata. Senator yes. Senator Risa, Opo. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Opo. Yung, uh, I appreciate talaga itong hearing ni Madam Chair. We're really trying to see what each of the sectors can bring to the table. Lalo na kasi, di ba yung describe natin, parang K, so-called K-shaped recovery. Meron talagang mga industriya, sektor na mukhang pwedeng itulak pataas, umahon. May ilan at least for the year, baka mahihirapan talaga. But well, I, I appreciate what the Chair is trying to do to enlist more of the sectors and industries dun sa aahon pa rin. So, Gusto ko actually, Madam Chair, balikan uh, si na Ms. Jenny at saka si Ms. Um, uh, Glow kanina, no? Uh, hearing what uh, the executive is planning or already prepared to do, hearing yung ine-express ni Madam Chair na suporta na gustong ibigay ng komite, the different prayers to government na sinasabi ni na Miss Jenny, Miss Glow, sa parte naman po ng caterers at sa parte po ng mga sari-sari stores and karinderia, paano din kayo nagre-retrofit? Paano din kayo nagre-repurpose para to be counted among the survivors so that we can you know, optimize yung ginagawa nyo na at yung handa nyo gawing pag-retrofit, parang yung CPMP kanina, to maximize what our committee through our chair is prepared to ask the executive to really meet you halfway on. Kumbaga, keeping the lights on, Madam Chair. Miss Jenny po at si Miss um, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Rontiveros. Actually, ma'am, um, uh, yeah, Jenny here, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Senator Ron Pivero, so for bringing that up. Now, actually, um, Senator Binay earlier mentioned that, um, yes, we are very much burdened, pero actually in our industry, we do not want to be a burden in our government. In fact, in some of our slides, which I was supposed to present earlier, we have drafted long before and we have presented it to the IATF some measures how to ensure that even if we resume operations, we resume events, we would guarantee the safety of our guests and our employees. Yes, we realize the fact that we cannot anytime soon go back to the 500 or thousands of catering, but at least we may be allowed sana to operate kahit on a small or micro level. 30 persons or 50 percent of the venue capacity will be a great help just as long as we are in hand, hand in hand with the government to ensure the protocols are being obs observed, no? Kasi minsan nakita namin sa restaurants, restaurants are allowed to operate before, no? Uh, 50 to 70 percent operation capacity. Then we were thinking, why would the caterers be not allowed to do so when they're, when actually, mas controlled pa namin? Each mm -hmm. venue, we know the capacity, if you're given the mandate, no, you can just accept up to a 50% uh, seating capacity, we will do so. Sa restaurants, hindi mo pa nga kilala ang mga tao kung makain sabay-sabay. But in, in the events, they practically know each other because technically they're family members. 
we can even uh, control the, the number of, of Senator uh, our Risa, with the, of course the, madam chair with the permission of senator risa hindi kayo kasali no. yung mga events venue hindi kayo kasali doon sa opening ng mga restaurant dati nalilito ako no hmm. ma'am sad to say we are not we, we we were not included in that that is the reason why we were left out actually eh. we, we are uh, para kaming nasa gitna hindi napapansin so Actually, talagang nagpapasalamat kami sa inyo kasi this time, we are being heard. Um, this is the first time that we are airing our light as caterers. Uh, it's just so funny because our industry is giving a lot. It's contributing a lot to our government, to employment, to the economy. But it is still our economy, which is, which is left behind. Hindi papansin. But we have a lot to offer. As Senator Ontiveros asked earlier, what can we bring? to the table. And this is yes. our commitment. Uh, if we are Madam allowed Chair? to do our events... Just Madam Chair, I, I know for a fact na may mga wedding na 100 guests na eh. So, I, I think pinayagan na rin kayo to cater. Um, that is the funny thing, Senator Binay. Because the, the mandates is so... It's always in the gray area. We do not know whether ba hindi iba kay Quezon City iba kay Marikina iba kay Rizal mm -hmm. so it's <laughs> we're really um, at a loss we would like to resume operations we would like to restart this industry no, although oh, not on the level as we used to but at least kahit pa paano andyan pa rin kami may negosyo may trabaho ang aming mga empleyado but you know this is basically what we're asking from the government Yes. It's a clear, coordinated, you have, you have, and thought of policy. Yes, Miss Jenny King, you, uh, if you will allow, uh, Senator Risa. Yes, Madam Chair. Ayaw pumayag talaga ng DILG. Can, uh, I have the uh, DILG actually, representative who's, uh, who's uh, manifesting in the chat all kinds of opposition. Mm. Saka siyempre, Madam Chair, natatakot yung iba't ibang mayor. Actually, Madam Chair, ayoko naman maging party pooper doon sa mga caterers. But kasi alam naman natin na there's a new study na airborne itong virus, di ba? And talagang dinidiscourage nila yung magkaroon ng gathering sa enclosed spaces. Yes. And in fact, I, I, I hope mukhang... Dapat i-defer na rin natin yung pag-allow ng sit-down sa mga restaurants. Baka pwede, 20%. But the mere fact nga na it's airborne. Siguro yung share ko lang, there's this recent case in Hong Kong na meron tayong kababayan na domestic helper. Nag-quarantine siya ng 21 days kasi sa Hong Kong 21 days, di ba? So yung hotel kung saan sila nag-quarantine, yung katabi niyang kwarto nag-positive. But na clear siya after 21 days. Since ang positive yung katabi niyang kwarto, pinuntahan nila ulit si domestic helper kasi kailangan niya ulit mag-quarantine kasi yung katabi niyang room may nag-positive. And then true enough, after a few days, nag-positive na din siya. So ganon, ganon ka. Uh, the, the virus keeps on changing, di ba? Keeps on getting more potent. Kaya parang yung scenario talaga na magkakaroon tayo ng gathering, eh mukhang lumalabo ng lumalabo hanggang nag-mutate itong virus. I mean, just just to share dun sa committee. I'm sorry, Ms. Jenny, na uh, I'm just, you know, being realistic, di ba? But ang sa akin is baka there's another way, there's another way for your industry to, to earn na hindi kailangan magkaroon ng malaking gathering. Yun lang po, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, given that, what uh, Sen Nancy has said. I, that's uh, Lucita yes, Madam Chair. expressing agreement. Sorry, Senator Risa, please. It's all right, Madam Chair. In light of uh, what Sen Nancy has shared, and I think that is the latest and weighty evidence, baka yung sinis na papansin na natin ginagawang shift kahit ng mga restaurant, moving all their tables outdoors, baka yun lang, opo, yung uh, health, safe, way na maka-retrofit ika nga, pati yung mga caterers, pati nga yung mga karinderia. Um, because uh, indoors and air-conditioned are really a no-no, especially right now, Madam Chair. That is correct. That's right. But I think in many cases, some of these venues will require perhaps 
would welcome financial assistance to retrofit mm -hmm. for outdoor dining, for example, for yeah, bigger sure. uh, cross ventilation uh, windows, uh, mm -hmm. for the possibility of further e commerce. Para palawak mm -hmm. yung walang katapusang uh, ube pandesal, damihan na siguro, and perhaps cold and warm uh, trucks to be able mm -hmm. to deliver better. Yung mm -hmm. practical lang on the ground, yung tulong na I think will be meaningful kasi nga, hindi nga babalik itong malalaking uh, pagtitipon. So, Opo, Madam Chair. Baka pwedeng idagdag yun ni na Opo, baka pwedeng idagdag ni na Miss Jenny yun sa kanilang prayers to government. That assistance to move their business outdoors where it is safer. Salamat, Madam Chair. Salamat, Miss Jenny. Okay. At si Miss Glow, baka may gusto rin input Ayan, doon. Ayan, si Miss Glow, sa karinderya naman. Nako, dapat sagutin kayo ng DTI. At uh, sabi mo, yung malalaki lang ang pinahahalagahan. Uh, Nakamute po kayo. Oh. Uh -huh. Yan, okay na po? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, totoo pong nangyari yan. Nakumbaga, ang DTI po kasi... Ah, uh, kumbaga kagaya namin, nag-file kami sa DTI. Pero mas priority po nila ang may mga permit na galing ng LGU. Pero like ng sari-sari store, ang permit lang po namin ay sa kumbaga sa ano laang po, uh, barangay. Eh paano naman po kaming mga karenderya? Paano po kami madadagdagan ang kita ay sa mahal po ng mga bilihin like po ang baboy hindi po ba pwedeng pansinin ng gobyerno yan para bumaba naman po yung baboy para naman po ay? makapagluto kami ng Naku. tama at makakuha kami ng Naku, po, yung baboy nakakaanim na hearing na po kami opo ay kasi kung baga po napakahirap uh, magkakal ng ibebenta natin sa mga customer Kasi like noon, kumbaga dati ay lima, magiging tatlo na lang po para lang po may maitinda kami. Pero DTI. hirap na hirap po talaga kami. Yes, uh, ano, DTI, ano meron, ba tayong, uh, meron ba tayong uh, itinutulong sa ating mga karinderya? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair? Yes, uh, me Meron pong... Uh, negosyo sa barangay, livelihood seeding program. Pero hindi po ito para lang sa karinderia or mga ke, uh, yung ating ano. But this is po yung binibigyan sila ng uh, I think uh, 5,000 to 8,000 uh, parang uh, seed seed money to start uh, their uh, business or they could restart their businesses. Yes, uh why why does it seem that why does it seem that the karinderia and sari sari stores are not feeling this uh, effort? Baka kulang pa kayo sa tulak o kulang tayo sa pera? Kulang po sa pera actually. Hello Madam Chair. Yes, uh, may dagdag lang po ako na yun po nga yung sinasabi na ang sari sari stores sa kumbaga yung per barangay ay bibigyan po ng dagdag puhunan para makarecover po yung mga sari-sari store. Pero hanggang sa ngayon nga po, uh, wala pang nangyayari. Pinag-fill up lang po kami, kasama na din po ako doon sa nag-fill up na yon na nire-recommend ng barangay na mabibigyan kayo ng dagdag tulong para makarecover ang mga sari-sari store. Kaya lang, papaano naman po yung iba na hindi na naaabot ng barangay, hindi Tama. po natin alam kung select lang po yun or ano po yun, pero ako uh -oh. po ay mapagad at nakasama ako doon. Ay perhaps hanggang magsasara na po. That's right. Um, perhaps we can ask the DTI, bigay na lang sa committee yung uh, parameters nitong, uh, magkano ba budget ng DTI dyan sa negosyo sa barangay? Baka naman pagkaliit-liit. I'm sorry, okay, Madam Chair. I, I don't have the the number yet. Okay lang. Pakisubmit na lang. Pakisubmit uh, na, na lang po namin. Apo, Thank you. Details. Thank you very Thank much. You. Alam Lay po ni Chos, um, napaka masalimuot ang uh, food sector, but uh, we still have to talk about the medical sector na medyo bloody rin, ano? Uh, at uh, nasa harap ng, uh, kumbaga sila yung frontline ng bakbakan ngayon. And uh, we still have the IT sector and we also have the cement sector. So if I may uh, just call on the uh, 
if it's okay with our uh, colleagues, our senators, can we move forward to Dr. Jaime Almora mm -hmm. and uh, as well, uh, Mr. Teddy Padilla and the <laughs> entire private sector involved in uh, medicine, so no? Sino pa mauuna? Um, no. Yes. Yes, good good afternoon, Madam Chair. This is uh, yeah, to Doris Sorry, Padilla. it's taken so long, Mr. Padilla, if you uh, <laughs> like to present. I know that you've uh, submitted copious papers to this committee, um, in addition to your other uh, um, co-members in this sector. Uh, thank you for the acknowledgement, Madam Chair, and good afternoon to everyone. No? Um, again, um, I, I, I'm very, uh, we're very thankful for the opportunity to be here, no? Uh, to share the concerns of the industry, the pharmaceutical industry amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. No? But before I continue, I just want also to make note that we would like to thank the Chair, uh, Senator Marcos, and the other legislators in the room for the passage of the VAT exemption on medicines for four additional categories, no? which is mental health, cancer, TB, and uh, kidney disease, no? um, and other COVID and the COVID-related products. Uh, we're still waiting for the list of the qualified medicines from the DOH, which is needed so that patients can start to feel the benefits of this law. No? Uh, and we assure the committee that we are working closely uh, with DOH, with FDA on, on the matter. No? Um, so moving a bit for, for Madam Chair, no? the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need for a robust and pharma uh, for a robust pharmaceutical system in the country. Uh, to be able to provide the latest, most innovative medicines and vaccines for unmet needs, including emerging public health needs. Due to reinvestments in the research and development, the COVID-19 vaccines have been discovered less than a year than since the global declaration of the pandemic. So tremendous efforts have also been made to ensure the uninterrupted supply of medicines in the country. With the varying implementations of quarantine measures, our members needed to implement alternative measures to minimize supply chain disruptions. From manufacturing facilities working overtime to chartering uh, flights and seeking alternative sources, these have led to the tenfold increase in the costs, but no, these were I'm absorbed sorry. to keep prices from surging. Like many other industries, Madam Chair, we are not immune, we are not gaining, and we have not recovered from the pandemic. Ayan, kapag nag-alarm, tatawagin mo ako Excuse me. At the at the peak of the pandemic, the pharmaceutical industry experienced double-digit contraction. Worse, the ethical prescription or non-vitamin market contracted by up to 18.2%, with the overall decline in hospital patient volumes of up to negative 72% and low prescription census, these increased expenses all contributed to this contraction. The negative impact, Madam Chair, is further compounded by the continued implementation and planned expansion of price cuts, aggravating our pharmaceutical supply and access situation. The price cuts implemented in June last year, covering 133 products and reaching up to 50%, with a planned expansion reaching up to 93%, have forced companies to review the sustainability of their operations. Uh, certain companies were forced to withdraw their products here as the price cut was deemed unsustainable, impacting access to medicines of patients, the employment of Filipinos working in the pharmaceutical and allied sectors, and overall research and economic investments. Proposals establishing a drug price regulatory board at this time are not helping and may discourage highly needed pharmaceutical investments critical to economic recovery, including the entry of innovative medicines in the country. Thus, we respectfully ask for your support, honorable members of this committee, in providing relief to our industry as we continue to operate to the best of our capabilities to ensure the uninterrupted supply of and access to life-saving vaccines and medicines at this time of pandemic. We respectfully recommend a legislative proposal giving relief to businesses covered by price regulation, mandating its review and issuing temporary suspensions or revisions as needed. We also ask that creations or proposals rather for the creation of a drug price regulation board at this time be set aside to aid regulated businesses and allow them to cope with the economic losses of the pandemic. 
In lieu of price regulations, what we propose and we hope that the legislator will agree to is to urge the Department of Health to implement the Universal Health Care Act and the National Integrated Cancer Control Act, which many of our good senators have authored. The tools provided in this landmark legislation, such as pooled procurement, price negotiations, and expanded benefit packages, offer broader, sustainable, effective ways of improving access to medicines, especially in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Allow us to emphasize that price regulation will not address medicine access gaps, as it suggests that patients will continue to pay for medicines out of pocket. On the other hand, the full implementation of the UHC Act and MECA provide an available solution, bringing down prices with volumes and offering these medicines as subsidized or even free to the Filipino patients without the negative impact of price cuts. In this time when unemployment is alarmingly high and resources are scarce, the use of the above-mentioned tools, Madam Chair, will enable the government to enhance the support provided to Filipino patients. Again, we thank you very much for the opportunity, for your kind consideration of our position, and we look forward to closely working and collaborating with you as we navigate our way out of this pandemic. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Padilla, thank you very much. You're making reference to uh, Executive Order 104 with regard to the price cuts in the 133 products. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, and uh, it appears that you have the Foundation for Economic Freedom and uh, the pharma industry support in this regard. Is that right? Uh, that is correct, Madam Chair. So... Um, your recommendations are that uh, the Universal Health Care Act be uh, fully implemented. Malayo pa tayo doon. Pati yung Anti-Cancer Act. Maram, malayong malayo pa rin tayo doon. At saka yung expanded uh, Phil Health and other health packages. Tama po ba? Uh, yes, uh, amongst others, Madam Chair. No? Yes. Um, I think... Uh, a favorite uh, whipping boy in the Senate is Big Pharma. But obviously, with the vaccination uh, effort, it's only Big Pharma that can supply the vaccines. So uh, in terms of pharmaceutical security, uh, what are you recommending? Well, What's um, the bigger budget and, uh, and the pool procurement? Is yes, ma um, with respect, no, no, Madam Chair, because um, as we know, Businesses also are need to be um, to have the incentive to stay, you know. And over the years, what we've noticed is that um, a lot of the innovative medicines. This was even before the pandemic, Madam Chair. No? Sure. A lot of the innovative products were, were were bypassing the Philippine market because of a lot of uncertainty and inconsistencies, you know, in in, in certain uh, policies, you know. As they For say, example, uh, well, the biggest incentive to come in is to remove a disincentive. And that also includes a certain policies that uh, are sometimes a very uh, applied in a very um, um, sudden manner. No? So uh, we, we had a, a round of price controls implemented a little over 10 years ago uh, in, in order to improve access to medicines for the public. No? Uh, and at that time, there was no Universal Health Care Act. There was no uh, there was no National Cancer Control Act. And one may argue that the intentions were were actually noble to allow people to pay for their medicines at a cheaper price. But uh, regrettably, the studies that came about, as as, as commissioned by not, not just uh, the private sector but by the Department of Health, have showed that the access actually did not take place. You know, and those who really benefited were those who actually could afford to pay. For the medicines in the first place, whereas our 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 our, our marginalized and poor sectors were not um, able to because they didn't even have any money to begin with to spend on on that, no. And that's why universal healthcare is actually a very ideal solution to come in, and that's where the tools are available and which we can implement right now, no. Um, and and I think um, with respect to Phil Health and the other agencies involved, Philippine Pharma Procurement or PITC, you know. Um, they're actually ready to, 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 to come in. Even the Department of Health, Madam Chair, has proven to be very nimble in when it comes to actually negotiating on, at, at volume, no? which they've proven when it comes to negotiating the prices of, of certain cancer medicines and even kidney transplant drugs. No? 
um, because they've got they, they they give the assurance of volume in exchange for the for the for the uh, price to to drop. It's it's just the the economics, no. But um, I think what happens is that many many of uh, many find solace in using the coercive power of legislation to get things done. You know, with, um, and, and unfortunately, because of that, then um, it, it becomes a question of not want, anymore wanting to sit down and, 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 and talk and be able to come up with a... With the, with the, with the, Are you uh, saying Executive Order 104 has a coercive effect on your industry, Paul? Well, what happens, Paul, is that what's happening is that we're, we're seeing um, companies, of course, now thinking, well, if this is the situation here, and I'm going to be selling uh, at co lower than cost, Correct. then I might as well pull out, no? Uh, and we cannot stop, of course, we cannot stop um, uh, enterprises from thinking that way. But in the meantime, we are so absorbing the transportation. Was already implemented. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Yes. Padilla. You're saying dun sa EO 104, yung price cuts, all, um, almost half or half were already implemented uh, middle of last year. Yes, they they there was a the sign in February and then there was a implementation done in June, you know, July last year, and there's a, that's just the first round. The second round is supposed to take place, and the, even the 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 proposed uh, discounts or post price cuts are actually supposed to reach uh, higher levels, Madam Chair. At the same time, however, it doesn't really translate on the retail side because it the the formula that they're looking at is just to modify the wholesale margin. Which was actually beyond the purview of the original uh, RA nine five zero two, Madam Chair. So what we're saying here is that um, rather than use these math, these 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 tools and these measures, a more sustainable uh, approach, which will be of a great benefit to all patients, the government, and the industry, is to implement the the pool procurement, the price negotiations. And the uh, multi-year obligations, if that's possible. Yeah. May I request that you do our homework for us and actually some uh, cost-benefit analysis with regard to uh, this uh, wholesale uh, price reduction that you're referring to, as opposed to the retail um, inflexibility in price. Pero uh, yeah. tignan niyan kung magkano oh. ba talaga dapat at. Uh, well, kung saan na yung inflection point kasi mukha nga hindi nag-e-epekto ganun pa rin yung presyo eh yes madam chair uh, yung observations you are correct no um many cases po what's happening is that there's a published new price which is not much different from the old price but it's actually the wholesalers who are being asked to 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 uh, move about their margin and and that becomes a problem also for for the for for that yeah. no? for the discussion points no oh. Can your lawyers help us to take a look at the executive order once again and uh, perhaps recommend to uh, Malacanang or uh, uh, draft uh, new bills uh, following negotiation with the executive that uh, we can actually impact retail prices effectively? Uh, I think, uh, as you said, that's the desired goal. Para pareho naman tayong gusto mas murang ang gamot. Pero mukhang hindi umeepekto eh. So, uh, but, but, pwede nyo kami tulungan na uh, can uh, your lawyer, your legal help us with language? No, of course, uh, Madam Chair, we'll do, uh, we'll do our part to, or, to help, uh, no? Um, uh, in some of our, the, the papers that we have actually submitted to your to your good office, no? We've included that, no? Uh, the, the the points to, to consider. At the same time... Because you're, you're recommending a review and deferral, no? So I was wondering uh, how many months deferred, how many years deferred, or pending the emergency and so on. Perhaps a uh, uh, more uh, concrete language could be provided so that we are clear. Yes. You know, what's also interesting, Madam Chair, is that last year, late last year, the Department of Health actually had sit-down sessions with uh, the individual pharmaceutical okay. companies. No? And uh, as a result of that, I think there's been some progress in terms of understanding the uh, the points, the, 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 the price points that will be actually acceptable to all. No, But uh, we're still awaiting, of course, the okay. official uh, memorandum that come, coming from the Department of Health on that matter. Okay. No? Um, but at least there was that talk, and that's what we're what we're saying. It's actually part of price negotiation to actually have a sit down that way and, and right. talk about that's volumes. Right. No? 
So uh, in a way, the, it's probably a slow implementation mm -hmm. of the Universal Health Care Act, given the circumstances, but it's already enshrined in the law. And I think there are some proposals, in fact, to set up a, re immediately the price negotiation board uh, coming from the Senate. No? Um, I'm trying to recall which senator has actually proposed it. But nonetheless, it's, it is a, those are steps in the right direction for all, no? uh, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, um, um, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, who is that? Sorry. Uh, Risa, Madam Chair. Hi, Senator Risa. Sorry. Hi. It's all right, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Uh, I was looking forward to the um, presentation of uh, Mr. Padilla because I was hoping to continue uh, one or some of the topics opened earlier by Mr. La Chica uh, on telemedicine, medical electronics, uh, equipment for COVID, PPEs, and even uh, uh, remote monitoring. But um, I value their inputs as one of our stakeholders in this hearing. I actually reviewed, Madam Chair, the, the title of the chair's resolution, uh, looking at the hard-hit industries in the country um, and it, uh, its socioeconomic uh, impact in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. And actually, Madam Chair, in this case, the hardy hit are uh, the citizens, the patients, the ones who need to buy medicines and vitamins regularly, if not daily. And in fact, I think the pharma industry uh, is not one of the hardest hit. It is poised to be not only the one to benefit from the pandemic, but it is poised to be a savior of our country, precisely because this is a health crisis. It's a pandemic. So um, I'm uh, a bit sad to hear that they are opposed to the uh, executive order. Uh, when the president signed that executive order, that was in fact only the second time since the office of the president exercised its prerogative to issue an MDRP or maximum drug retail price list. Only the second time, Madam Chair, in the almost one and a half decades since we passed the cheaper medicines law way back in uh, 2007. So I, I'm sad to hear that in the middle uh, of a pandemic where our citizens hirap na hirap sa uh, gastos, nakakailanganin sa gamot, hindi lang para sa COVID, pero sa iba pa nating long-standing health concerns that they would be seeking exemptions. When in fact, their products are basic necessities. Now, lahat po tayo halos kakailanganin bilhin ang mga yon. I'm glad and I share uh, Mr. Padilla's call, yes, to fully implement the UHC law now. Actually, Madam Chair, itong pandemic dapat ang litmus test ng kompleto at magaling na implementasyon ng UHC law. I'm glad that he called for the full implementation of the cancer law even now. In fact, uh, cancer medicines po, Madam Chair, ang ilan sa idinagdag ni Presidente nung pangalawang paglabas nila ng MDRP list. And in, Madam Chair, we, we do not take solace in the so-called coercive power of legislation. Through such legislation, we undertake affirmative action on behalf of our citizens in partnership with our stakeholders. And primarily now in the middle of a pandemic, in fact, the pharmaceutical industry, which, as I said earlier, is poised to be or is already not just the big winner, but the savior of the country in terms of um, industries. I'm glad that Mr. Padilla called for pooled procurement, indeed, uh, on the part of DOH as the biggest uh, single buyer in partnership with uh, PhilHealth, price negotiations, yes, and indeed, the formation finally of the price negotiation board. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I'm uh, the member of the Senate or one of the members of the Senate, he mentioned, who has been calling for finally the uh, formation of this price nego board. Uh, mandato po yan, Madam Chair, sa UHC law, and it is all the more, all the more needed now uh, in this pandemic. So uh, just for the record, um, Madam Chair, um, uh, also in the interest of time, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, I need to go ahead for another hearing by right. our colleague, yes. Sen Coco, right. at 1.30. That's right. Opo, pero agyamanak, marami salamat, Madam Chair. Salamat din po kay Mr. Padilla at lahat po ng ating mga a resource persons, marami salamat po. Thank you very much, Mr. Padilla. Would you like yeah. to respond or yes. shall we call on the other uh, pharma 
groups that are here, Sanofi, I think is here, as well as Dr. Lloyd Balahadja. Uh, uh, before before um, turning this over, um, Madam Chair, yes, I just want to also acknowledge that. Thank you, say thank you for the comments of Senator Risa. Again, what we're seeing here is that okay, the best of intentions did not necessarily translate into action or into the results that we want. So what what while while policy was intended to help uh, Filipinos buy medicines at a more affordable rate, the accessibility factor was actually uh, curtailed. So what we're seeing here is that um, it did not really improve. And that's why there are studies that have already come out, even by the DOH, that showed by PIDs and other think tanks that have shown that the access, which was supposed to be the result, the end result, the end game of a policy on cheaper medicines, did not happen. And why is that so? Because again, there was if it was an out-of-pocket expense, if, if your constituency do not have the pockets to speak of figuratively, then they won't even be able to buy no matter how much closer to zero the cost of the medicines is. What it will really help is for government to actually step in and come up with a plan. And so back in 2008, there was no such thing as UHC. Now we have UHC. Now those tools are available. And thank you, Senator Risa, for being part of the price negotiation body, because that is really a part and parcel, a, a tool for effective uh, policy uh, implementation where you can sit down and government can actually come as the big player and, and possibly be the tough negotiator, but at least they come in with the volumes that are required. They know that how much is necessary for implementation across the country. And that also includes cancer medicines as well. And then they can sit down with the and, and with, with the with the providers and come up with the win-win situation, no? the win-win solution for all, including of course naturally for the patients. No? But in terms of market conditions, what happens is that if it becomes a situation where it's not sustainable, Madam Chair, Senator Ontiveros, then there's nothing to stop a company from retrenching, from pulling out. And yes, we are grateful to be able to play a role in helping the country recover as one from the pandemic. But at the same time, we are also absorbing a lot of costs. These costs are not reflected in the end prices. These costs are being taken in. Companies have actually let people go. Oncology uh, divisions of some of our members have actually uh, downsized as a result. And again, it's not because um, it isn't because uh, of anything, but as a result, really of pure economics, uh, the, the, the numbers are not coming in. If we check with our colleagues from the hospital association, you also know that the hospital visits have gone down tremendously. And that's also where a lot of prescription products are, are, are given. So it, it, it's a direct correlation also as well with the situation involving uh, the hospitals and the pharmaceutical uh, products, particularly those that are prescri prescribed. The ones that have done uh, tremendously are the, most, the ones who sell the multivitamins. And that is not a prescription product. Those are over-the-counter uh, formulations. And that has been one of the only other areas that have actually increased in, 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 um, in re returns. So yes, we, we do appreciate the fact, the fact that we are being appreciated. Thank you so much. And it, and it is true. We have, the, we have done in record time what people probably thought would take about five or 10 years. No? But nonetheless, there are, uh, the situation in the Philippines uh, also affects the pharmaceutical industry. We're actually grateful that we have been included in the A4 category because uh, our members still have to expose themselves to Mark to, to, to distributing the medicines across the different hospitals and health centers in the country. So again, um, Madam Chair, Senator Antiveros and the rest, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to, to speak, thanks. Thank you. thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. So I think the point is to add to our tools in this health pandemic, including okay. government coming to the table as a tough negotiator. Perfect. Hindi yung pagbawas ng tool na meron na tayo tulad ng MDRP list. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Um, perhaps we can uh, call on uh, the others who are here. Is it uh, Dr. Balahadja or uh, the representative of Sanofi, Mr. Lubaton, if he's still here? Andyan pa ba yung uh, iba? Otherwise, we proceed to the hospital workers. The uh, hospital association led by Dr. Almora, is he here, committee secretary?
or in that case, Attorney no. Jihan Natividad of the Private Hospital Association. Parang nakita ko sila kanina, wala na ba? Comsec? Comsec Beth? Narayang pa ba si Sir, wala na, po ang, oh, ano, wala na po ang mga hospital association. Okay. Pasi po yung isang chamber of pharmaceutical, si Dr. Lloyd Balahadja. At saka yung po sa drugstore association, si Mr. Rolando Ray, wala na rin po. Ah, so wala na sila? Opo. Yung Sanofi po, nakalagay pa dito, pero hindi, hindi okay. naman po sumasagot. Um, in, that, in that case, Comsec, can we just urge them to provide us with position papers and uh, further uh, uh, explanations of certain requests that they've submitted? Senator, si BOI po na nagtataas po ng kamay. Ay, sorry. Okay. Please, uh, si please. Christina uh, Constantino po. Yes. Is that BOI or no? Hindi, Hindi Pasco. No, I think Nation that na, uh, Pasco, the, ah? the karinderia no, in Nation the stores. Nation. Pwede lang natin tapusin, please, yung health para medyo maayos yung usapan. Usapin. Tapos na, wala na. Wala nang ibang hospital or medical. Wala, wala na, Tor. Okay, yung cement, uh, yung cement at yung telco? Wala na din po, Senator, pati yung smart at saka yung globe. Oh, sige. So, babalikan na lang po natin ang mga yan. And in the meantime, I think uh, we need another hearing pagkat yung mga services, lalong-lalo na yung tourism and transport. Pati yung creative, hindi po natin nakumbida. Yung IT, medyo kailangan natin kausapin higit sa lahat. Yung Globe at uh, yung iba pang internet providers sabay ng mga BPO at... Uh, yung transport, yung ating mga bus operators, howling, etc. Maraming na, marami pong daing para marinig na natin on an industry basis. Um, in the meantime, I think uh, Mr. Padilla, we had some requests ano? and DTI, we had some requests. So, huling-huli na lang, babalikan na naman natin si Pasco, uh, si Miss Constantino. Ito naman yung mga karinderya ulit. Meron pa kayo itadagdag po? Meron po kami in a Hello po. Yes, yes. Oo, sige lang. Hello po. Uh, yes, tuloy na lang po. po Magandang araw po, Madam Chairperson. Salamat uh, po uh, sa pagkakataon na ito at makapag-share kami sa inyo at magandang araw. Anong idadagdag ninyo? Anong idadagdag ninyo? Kasi nagsalita na yung Pasko kanina, si Ms. Glow. Meron, meron po kaming maikling presentation, Madam Chairperson. Ah, uh, okay, sige. Ah, uh, pero ang ang pwede bang uh, pwede pwede bang kasi tapos na kayo, nagpresent na kayo kanina. So I was uh, concerned that uh, perhaps pwede kung kung maari, ah uh, ano na lang yung idadagdag ninyo sa sinabi kanina? O oh, sige po. Ah, uh, may press you. Uh -oh. Yung pong how COVID po na naapektuhan kaming mga micro-retailer. Yes, yes. Anong, anong, yes. Uh, anong i-reading ninyo or request ninyo or maitutulong namin? Kasi po meron po kaming ano, uh, 7,000 members before po ng pandemic. Uh, dahil po sa nag-pandemic, uh, sigurado po na nabawasan kami dahil dito po na hindi kami makapag-conduct ng uh, Uh, activities um, uh, sa tulong sa tulong po ng uh, aming kaibigan, naghanda po kami ng maikling presentation uh, Madam okay. Sherpson, kung okay. pwede po sige, sige yes please batay po sa uh, sagot ng aming miyembro tungkol sa epekto ng lockdown uh, yes. kanilang negosyo humigit po po uh, 344 members ang nakapagbigay ng uh, Uh, kanilang sagot. Ito po ay ginawa namin noong unang dalawang linggo ng uh, Abril. Um, next please, meron po kaming uh, maikling hello po. Yes, yes. Ang, pinaka uh, yes, po. Uh, uh. Ang pinakamalaking dahilan ng pagliit uh, ng, invent ng inventory o stock ng aming mga paninda. Ito po ay dahil sa mga sumusunod. Limitado ang supplies na maari namin bilhin. 
ng mga unang ECQ, hindi po kami makapamili dahil walang masakyan. Ang ibang puhunan at paninda ay nagamit na rin sa mga ilangan ng aming pamilya. po ng hanap buhay ang aming mga kasama sa bahay. 80% po sa aming survey na ang mga members ay nagsasabi na kulang na kulang ang kanilang puhunan na pinaiikot sa tindahan. Samantalang 40% naman po ay walang stock ng goods doon sa mga malalapit na bilihan. Unang-una, nais po namin ipaalam na mahigit na 65% ng aming mga kasamahang retailers ay nagsisara pansamantala o permanente nitoong nakaraang ECQ, MECQ, at iba po noong 2020 po ay nahirapan ng mag-operate. Nasabi na rin po kanina na naniglo na talagang nagtaas din po ang presyo ng produkto sa aming mga bilihan. Mahigit 51% po sa amin ay napilitan magtaas din ng presyo. Nandoon po ang bigas, mantika, canned food at kasama na rin po ang baboy. Yung pong aming mga karinderya, kasamahan, ang pangunahing customer po nila ay empleyado ng mga opisina, constructions o factories. Nabawasan din po ang kinita dahil nabawasan ng mga customer na pumapasok na empleyado sa araw-araw. Ano ho ang uh, pinaka-priority na hinihiling ninyong tulong para makapagbukas, nakakaalarma yung 65% na nagsara? Opo. Um, Unang-una po talaga puhunan. Okay. Um, kailangan po namin ng puhunan dahil nga Pero po sa puhunan. Tumahan. Eh, ano? nag-aalok naman yung nag-aalok naman yung DTI sa Small Business Corporation ng puhunan. Wala naman daw nangungutang. Madam Chairperson, kasi unang-una yung pong tungkol sa mga requirements. Napakarami pong requirements na hinihingi nila. Eh, since ako, na kami ako, po... Magpatulong ay, tayo sa... Magpatulong tayo, uh, Ms. Constantino, sa Small Business Corporation. Konting-konti na lang yung requirement nila. Hindi naman sila bangko eh. Opo, eh, eh, ang mostly ng aming sari-sari store at malilit na kandiriya, eh, barangay permit lang po, yung nat nasabi ni Nanay Glo kanina, yes, na right. barangay uh -huh. permit lang po. Opo. Tapos Ngayon, yung, kung, yung sinasabi nilang negosyo sa barangay, uh, na applicable sa inyo, eh, kulang naman yata yung puhunan din nila. Opo, Madam Chairperson. Tapos po, kung maglo-loan po, ang unang-unang kung kinatakot o ang kaba ng mga sari-sari uh, store at karinderya, eh, halimbawa po, nakautang. Yung pinaiikot po yun, eh, yung pong mga kasama sa bahay, eh, nawalan ng trabaho. Ang problema po, paano po ang pagbabayan? Eh, Correct. Oo, oh, na, tama. Nakatakot po sila. Siyempre, tama yun po naman. Yung ang dahilan. Opo. Siyempre po, pag nangutang tayo, kailangan magbayad. Tapos may mga, ano din po, may mga tindahan po na since na malapit sa hospital, Madam Chairperson, ay eh, uh, medyo uh, nasabihan sila ang ilan sa kanila na hindi muna pwedeng magbukas, which is nakaapekto sa kanilang uh, uh, pang-araw-araw na kikitain. I see, I see. Okay. So, uh, uh, kung... Ah, sorry, meron pa kayo dadagdag? Opo, Madam Chairperson, yung pong mga permit, ang hinihiling po namin kung pwede po sa panahon nitong pandemic, uh, bawasan po muna sa panahon pandemic para makarapat po kami kung ano mga permit ang kailangan po. Ano yung, yan, yung mga barangay permit o yung mayor's permit to operate? Hindi po, kasi... Pag mo, sa requirements po kasi, hindi lang ang permit. Kasi yun po ang pinakamababang ano. Correct. Katulad ng aming, yung aming mga, meron kasi po mga tindera na kwek-kwek ang tinda, uh, yung mga uh, junk food kung tawagin nila, kwek-kwek yung mga banana fruit. Opa. Madam Chairperson, hindi, pag sinabi po sa kanila na kumuha ng gantong requirements, naaalarma po agad sila dahil another gastos po. E banana queue lang na ititinda nila kasi kasama po namin sila sa sa uh, PASCO, as PASCO member. Ah, hiwalay pang permit yun. Opo. Okay, sige. Maraming salamat alam ninyo kung maaari kasi nga 
dahil sa gipit tayo sa panahon, kung maaari, mag-submit na lang po kayo ng uh, yung sabi ninyong presentation na uh, medyo hirap tayo sa IT, medyo hirap tayo sa internet natin. Kung maaari, submit na lang po ninyo sa ating committee secretary, share ko sa ating mga senador. Ganon din yung ibang hindi uh, nakahabol at uh, yung grupo ng medical na narito kanina, ako yung nagpapaumbanin dahil hindi nga nakahabol. Ganon din yung um, drug stores, private hospitals, chamber of pharmaceutical, yung Sanofi, tapos yung Globe at yung Smart. Tigit sa lahat. Senator, nandito pa po yung ano, representative ng, ano, ng Smart at PLDT, si oh. Attorney Aileen Regio po. Ay, okay, at saka okay. si Attorney Roy Ibay. Okay, sige. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Senator. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I will not uh, prolong the talk that I will give. I'll just say that in the initial stages of the uh, community quarantine, Madam Chair, you, I'm sure it's public knowledge that we had we had a difficult time swinging resources from what used to be a predominantly enterprise uh, grade. Uh, service and enterprise uh, connection uh, facilities where our facilities are to uh, bringing them to the rural areas and to the homes. But uh, towards the latter part of the year last year, we were able to adjust and uh, uh, fortunately we have uh, in, in uh, response to the call of the president and also of, of, of the senators and the congressmen and all the LGU um, uh, officials who have uh, been clamoring for a better internet service. We have um, greatly improve our internet service and uh, I'm pleased to report that as of end of March this year we're already fifth, uh, PLDT is already fifth in Southeast Asia, uh, 81st in uh, the entire world 107, among 177 countries. Uh, but we still, I, I, I uh, heard that uh, what is, uh, the matters that are being discussed here are the challenges. I we are very fortunate um, uh, and, uh, that like the other industries who have uh, spoken a while ago um, um, because of the uh, call of the president and by Anihan too, we have uh, been Wait, helped by the ICT and ARTA. They came out with a joint memorandum. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, Attorney Reggio. Sorry, uh, kung pwede lang patayin lang muna yung uh, kwan. Patayin lang muna ninyo yung mga kwanjo dahil hindi kami nagkarinigan dito. Okay, thank you. Sige. Ito na namin, Senator. Okay, attorney. Rachel. Salamat po. Yes, Opo. sabi mo, po, po, naglabas po ng joint. Yeah, fifth na tayo sa Southeast Asia. Parang hindi ko pa rin ramdam. Pero okay lang, sige. Ah. Uh, DT lang po yun ma'am pero iba po yung, yung national average po mas mababa ng konti because uh, uh, I, I don't think whether it's known to all that uh, PLDT is not the only internet provider in the Philippines. You have thousands actually existing right. right now that uh, ISPs. That's why I have been recommending po sana that if another meeting is called uh, on the matter that the industry players, the yes. industry associations be called uh, not just PLDT Globe and Smart because uh, there are a lot of other players and uh, they might have their own uh, challenges because although uh, I am pleased to say that uh, because of ARTA, the ICT, uh, the cooperation of DPWH, we've had a lot of improvements in terms of the permitting challenges that uh, we raised before to the president. Uh, every month we submit a report to ARTA uh, where we show that uh, we have been getting a lot of permits uh, now whereas compared to before, Madam Chair, and right. that uh, if, you could, if, you could just up, if you could just update us and just submit uh, submit siguro your uh, current status in terms of permitting uh, yes, and, uh, and uh, perhaps more importantly, because that's what this committee is about, hindi naman ito telecoms, ano? Ang uh, interest namin dito, eh makita ko nang gagawin ninyo in the next few years so that uh, the centrality of digital, of internet, of Wi-Fi, of broadband um, is, um, is actually acknowledged and uh, strengthened kasi we're all complaining about uh, the bad services. And uh, it's important that we finally address it. Ano bang kailangan talaga para maratchet up? Ano? The ICT is always asking for more budget and they never get it. Uh, they're always being urged uh, that uh, 
Uh, they're always urging uh, more money, more inv more public investment in the IT space. Ang telcos naman, parati naman ninyo rin na reklamo yung uh, ating mga LGU. Eh, ang tagal kong LGU, kaya naiinis ako. Pero uh, meron, sigurong, meron sigurong ibang ganon. Hindi naman po lahat, Madam Chair. Meron po talaga minsan nahirapan po kami. Um, not just uh, the process, the paperwork, but also the fees. Iba-iba po kasi. So yun din po isa naming plea to the government. And I think uh, the, uh, the DOF is now studying to standardize the fees, not just for telcos, but um, the entire industry perhaps, uh, including the ISPs uh, and other uh, communication-based uh, players in the entire uh, country. So that uh, there'll be standard fees. Because iba-iba po ang mga sinisingil nun sa amin from ranging from, say, uh, up, say same permit, ranging from 1,000 to 500,000, something like that. So it's kind of... Ah! May mga ganun po, Madam Chair, na ni-raise na po namin yan sa DOF and they're studying right now. Kasi meron din man pong joint memorandum circular na sila, except that uh, ngayon, tinitingnan nila ano po ba talaga yung dapat na fee for a particular permit, type of permit. And we are hoping that uh, they come up so that's with that. require legislation or can that be done by NTC, DICT, and the LGUs? Actually, Madam Chair, kasi meron na po joint memorandum. Kasi tulad ng sinabi mo, pag LGU rates yan, iba-iba talaga yan. Iko nga po, Madam Chair, because nga po, di ba, lahat po uh, can have their own uh, revenue code. Eh. So, sure. doon po nagkaroon ng difficulty ngayon in the implementation kasi iba-iba po yung... Uh, uh, nakikita namin fee and uh, the DOF has committed in one of the ARTA meetings, the DOF has committed to also look into that and we're hoping that uh, it will come out soon. And in relation to that, there's another joint memorandum circular that is being worked on now by ARTA, the ICT and the, the same team uh, that will also uh, tackle other uh, infrastructure kasi ang natackle lang po, ang nalabas lang po yung passive uh, infrastructure, ito lang po yung tower. Eh, oh, hindi na po tatakbo ang discussion eh. Po, eh. Hindi po tatakbo kasi ang signal kung tower lang po yan. Kailangan po ng equipment, kailangan po ng fiber optic cable uh, leading to the core equipment of the telco. So, kailangan po, yun po, eh, yun po yung mahaba, like the cable that runs along all the streets, national highways, etc. Yun po yung kailangan. So, they're working on that and we're very appreciative of that. Um, siguro po in the challenges, I think na-mention na kanina, Talaga rin pong vaccination, um, just to be truthful to you. Uh, compared po last year, we just had three deaths due to COVID. This this just uh, up uh, until April. Ngayon lang po, we already had eight eight deaths due to COVID. Ganun po, and we have a thousand employees um, uh, who are positive. So ganun po kalaki yung impact sa amin because our people are really going around installing eh. Frontliners po talaga sila. So uh, we are kind of hoping. And it's good that we saw na na-amend po yung I think nalagay na po sila. At least those uh, who are... Nasa, uh, kung, nasa, nasa A1 ba o na naging A4 pa? Nasa A4 po ngayon. Pero nung in lang po, pero nung una po wala po sila. Pero it's good that they're now at A4. I don't know whether we are able to avail of that already. Kapag nga, A1 eh. Kung tatanungin ako. Kasi obviously <laughs> frontliner, lahat talagang uh, umaasa lamang sa IT eh. Yung nga po, eh. ang, ang problema po namin, dalawa po per team yan. Yung isa yung nagda-drive ng sasakyan kasi nandudul yes. po yung mga hagdanan, etc. Pag na-positive po yung isa, dalawa na po yung decommissioned kagad namin. Kasi pati uh -huh. isa po, likely positive. Kaya ang dami pong positive. Well, exposed person at the very least. Opo, ganun po yung nangyayari. Uh, so, yun lang po, so far, meron lang po kami ngayon mga international cable laying, submarine cable namin like the one in Jupiter. Yung Jupiter po, it's supposed to finish December. And again, that will improve, great to improve also the service kasi yun po yung uh, international submarine cables. Uh, dahil po pabago-bago po yung uh, community quarantine status natin, dati po nagkaroon ng special visa process Biglang tinanggal na naman po. So ngayon po yung mga ating mga foreign workers who are supposed to work on that. Uh, in the high seas po kasi yun eh, submarine cable laying. Medyo na... Give us a memo regarding that just to update the Senate on those activities para Sige naman po. we have something to look forward to. Uh, Sige po, yung pong mga parating po namin international cable, I think we have three po. Uh, the latest one, will, uh, the earliest... Uh, the one that will be finished earliest is supposed to finish December but hindi po namin alam kung mangyayari yan because ngayon nga po hindi makapasok yung mga foreign workers na who's supposed to work on the international submarine facilities po.
Yes, so, uh, that's the same issue brought uh, to fore by the SAP or electronics industry because the technical yes. consultants now from overseas are unable to visit. Uh, perhaps I would request from you na lang yung LGU rates na binanggit mo that may require a legislation dahil kasi to impose uh, uniform uh, or uniform or substantially equitable uh, uh, rates nationwide. Baka kailangan ng batas eh. So, uh, let kasi, us Madam know Chair, what you can do. Imagine yes. kung kami pong medyo malaki ng kumpanya na nahihirapan, lalo na po the smaller ones and we have thousand smaller ISPs in the Philippines. Yeah, all, the, all the small ISPs are complaining yes, about it. Yes, ma that's Madam right, Chair. That's right. Okay. Po, I will not go any further. Po. Alam I, po, I, 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 may have, I may have to call you again um, yes, together with the other ISPs and telcos so that we have a better understanding of the industry and a more comprehensive um, approach. Because hindi naman ako telco talaga na committee, kundi uh, kina, kinakailangan ilocate ko kasi sa macro. Eh, puro dependent sa inyo eh. Sige, Madam Chair. Opo. Okay, thanks. Sino pa? Pongsek, oh, nandito pa si Nandito Smart? pa po si Attorney Ibay. Hi, okay. Attorney Ibay po. Uh -uh. Representing. Madam Chair, uh, from Smart. Smart po, Smart. Po. Yes, from uh, but, uh, Smart. I, I, I'm, I'm also here po as a member of and officer of the Philippine Chamber of Telecom Operators. And uh, ah. I, I got some feedback din lang po from the small... Uh, provincial telephone companies uh, on yes. on the, also on their uh, on the challenges po that they're facing uh, amidst this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So um, first, let me begin by by sharing. No, yung, there there's already uh, a weakness in the economy po that is being felt also by the small telephone companies, and uh, they're having problems po actually in uh, collection. No, and uh, the feedback I I got was that. Um, they they already accept kahit po mga tingi tingi na rin din po the mga payments daw po wag lang po uh, ma pa-disconnect yung <laughs> subscribers Opo. so and then uh, also they uh, similar to i guess the the big telcos um they're also having problems also with their supply chain issues no kasi syempre um marami rin po sa kanila legacy equipment and then kagaya din po kami mga malalaking telco we rely also on uh, foreign uh, equipment so nagkaka problema po sa supply chain in terms of importing po a lot of this uh, uh, foreign manufactured uh, devices no that, uh, that's right. that support our network and then uh, yun din po basically we a lot of us uh, including the small telcos had to give grace periods no during the ECQ last year which uh, oh, we gave wow. out 6 month installments pa uh, pati rin po sila since uh, na mandato rin po sila and then um, for the bigger telcos naman po, we, we have also embarked on uh, a lot of this uh, uh, CSR activities. No? Uh, the big telcos actually provided a whitelisting no, for uh, the Department of Education by uh, whitelisting po yung website po ng DepEd para po kahit wala silang load. What is whitelisting? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yun po kahit wala po kayong load ay ma-access po ninyo yung, ano, yung website po ng DepEd and then uh, they have this portal po where... Uh, they have uploaded a lot of this educational material. So for uh, the time last year, uh, na, na bigay po ng whitelisting po yung mga malalaking telcos po of, uh, for I that. See. And then I I also uh, understand that for the upcoming registration po ng national ID, the big telcos will also be whitelisting the uh, portal for the uh, Philippine ID, no national ID, PILSIS. Uh, ibig sabihin for, for the phase one, um, Kahit po lang load, ma-access po ninyo yung uh, portal po ng, ng, ng uh, PSA, ng PhilSys, so you can uh, set an appointment where you can uh, do go to the phase 2 for biometrics so, po. For the international ID registration cannot be done online, di ba? Um, the task po is basically to try and, uh, uh, comp well, isa-segregate po nila yung, yung, ano, yung stages, so... Yung pong first phase will be done online and then the second phase oh, depends oh, on the online yes. eh, parang passport. Apo, so second phase uh, you go to your uh, appointed uh, branch where you will do biometrics for the for oh, the oh. national ID. And then po we also uh, will provide um, 
a lot of this free SMS for contact tracing, no? Uh, in the relation to stay safe. I think fact, actually, I, I, I've seen that already. Di ba ginagawa na yan? Opo, ginagawa po ngayon, ongoing po ngayon yun. Uh, we also actually... Pero bakit din ba ibig naman yung app na ginagamit? Um, but, well, I think the challenge po now is for all these different LJU apps to be integrated po into the national uh, stay safe, yung pong uh, accepted po ng IATF, NTF, which is the stay safe, which incidentally po ay uh, tumulong din po ang PLDT group po doon no, sa pagbuo po ng, uh, ng stay, stay safe. safe. Yeah, so I guess what I'm going to ask you again is... Um, what would be the new normal since we're utterly and completely dependent on telcos, ISPs, internet? Anong magagawa to uh, make this more uh, comprehensive and robust? Um, actually, ma'am, um, Madam Senator, uh, Madam Chair, we, we feel that, uh, again, it, it lies in the execution eh, because even if there were a lot of regulations or issuances last year, uh, medyo kagulo pa rin po kasi sa ground in terms of how to implement. Like, nagaya po ng colleague, nang sabi po ng colleague ko kanina, attorney Rey, yun, yun pong uh, marami pong hindi pa rin po nakakapasok po ng mga equipment, although na-mention na, na priority po talaga din ng telco, marami pa rin po kaming manpower po na hindi rin ma-deploy because, because of different interpretations in implementing community quarantine uh, regulations in the local communities. Uh, nahihirapan po mag-access po yung aming mga frontliners din po to roll yes. out yung the, and uh, prepare. As you, uh, know, the, uh, as you know, the Senate um, has the power to conduct inquiries as part of oversight. Um, would that be helpful if we uh, uh, conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation as to the implementation of uh, all uh, rules and regulations, including laws? Uh, regarding telcos para makita natin kung saan yung mga stumbling block, sino yung mga uh, cause of delay. Uh, yes, perhaps we can embark on that also. Especially, Madam Chair, on the importation of uh, equipment, including the end-user equipment. Uh, even as we speak, there are a lot of schools po that try to source their own uh, tablets and uh, gadgets for their students, no? even in the second-hand right. market. And we understand there's still a difficulty in bringing in a lot of this uh, end-user equipment. Oh, uh, tama yun. Sa amin nga sa Ilocos, mga donation, eh. Ang hirap na hirap opo. pa kung kaso. Yun nga po, eh. Um, so, yun lang po. And then, uh, we hope that, uh, the, uh, as mentioned also by my colleague, industry-wide, that the A4 category, category of telecom workers be given priority so that uh, by uh, possibly... Uh, third or fourth quarter, mas mamobilize na rin po yung mga frontliners po namin na makalabas. So, Di kasi na, po na... Sana nga, eh, one, they could be closed, lahat dependent sa inyo. O nga po eh, nag-dip po talaga din ang productivity with the uh, with the quarantine uh, protocols. In yeah. fact, we're also heavily dependent on uh, call centers and other support, ano, IT industries which have been I hard... Call center, ITA4 eh. O, oh, yun nga po eh. Ang gulo nga ng categories, nahirapan rin kami. Oo, okay. Right. Po. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ibay. And uh, perhaps, uh, Comsec, we should uh, call uh, another meeting uh, with regard to economic uh, development at uh, the uh, and the rollout of all our IT efforts. Kasi ibang usapan yan eh. Tsaka medyo masalimot, ang daming issue eh. Sige. So to all of you, thank you very much sa uh, ating Pasko, Miss uh, Constantino, nakahabol din kayo. At uh, kung may ihahabol pa, please na lang, uh, pakisulat na lang. Kasi bawasan ang presentation. Eh. Nagmamandali lang kami lagi rito. Alam mo naman, napakaraid tao. At uh, sa ating mga government agencies, pasensya, hindi ko natawagan yung BSP. Marami po akong hindi natawag, pero... Uh, Comsec, mukhang uh, kailangan natin pag-usapan yung services, uh, yung transport, tourism, BPO, eto nga, bitin yung IT, semento, hindi pa na pag-usapan. Uh, ganun pa man, uh, marami na rin tayo na talakay and I'm very, very grateful to all of you for having participated and not eaten lunch kahit food ang pinag-uusapan.
thank you very much to all of you. And uh, I hope uh, we uh, can come out with uh, a committee report that uh, addresses your uh, your uh, problems and uh, really brings us towards a uh, realizable new normal. Thank you very much. Is there anyone who has uh, something to add, Paul? Madam Chair. Oh, yes, yes. Sino na um, uh, From the ILG, Paul. Ah, yes, yes. yes. O, oh, sige. Ikaw ba yung kanina pang nag-message? Uh, nag yes, po. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, I just like to inform you lang po na mayroon kasi sinusunod na po yung East of the Wind Business, yung Artalo po. Yung nagko-complain po kanina na may mga requirements na hiningi po yung local government units. So, nag-release na po ang, ang ARTA, DILG, DTI, and DICT po ng Joint Memorandum Circular on the Requirements of the Business Permit for application. So, yun lang po yung dapat hinihingi po ng local government units. Oh, then, so, uh, para hindi na po pabalik-balik. Hindi na lang kami ng kopya para maipas namin kay Ms. Constantino, kay Manang Glo, at uh, yung iba pang Pasko. Yes po. Sabi po namin sa ano po. Thank you very much, DILG. And to all of you, maraming salamat. Uh, I hope uh, hindi kayo masyadong uh, ginutom. Pero sa kabila nun, <laughs> papayat naman tayong lahat. Thank you, Madam Chair. 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 Thank you